Seattle University. Greg Sexton and former Red Hawk outfielder Katie Favilla with you on ESPN Plus as we get set for game two of the doubleheader here between Utah Valley and Seattle University. The Red Hawks took the first one eight nothing in five innings, really just four and a half innings as they didn't have to bat in the bottom of the fifth. As you said in the at the end of the last broadcast, Katie, Utah Valley going to have to flush this one. What do they do uh, different here in game two? You know, I, I mean, it mainly is you got to come up with a plan, right? It felt throughout that first game that they were consistently chasing that rise ball of Carly Nance. And, it, you know, a little bit different, but same kind of speed with Steph Madrigal on the mound here for Utah Valley. Don't trace the drop ball, right? Look for something in the zone. Go up and at bat with a plan. Um, and they can hit the ball. This lineup up and down is strong, consistent, has gap-to-gap power all throughout this lineup. So they just need to stay within themselves, let that game go, and you've got Brooke Carter on the mound who's going to throw hard for you and, and come right out and, and go attack this game. For Seattle U, it's good to see Madrigal back on the mound here after she was hurt um, after a couple series ago. And you just got to keep the offense rolling. That was a good restart uh, for Seattle U from what we've seen in about the last month. Um, So you just want to keep that momentum going on the senior weekend. It is definitely a good thing to see Stephanie Madrigal back out in the circle as uh, she did. She actually was injured playing first base a couple of weeks ago against Grand Canyon and uh, did not look good after uh, that injury. She was really limping around, so definitely good to see her back out there. She is a junior from San Jose, California, 2.25 ERA, leads the WAC, and she's got a 14-5 and record, has uh, pitched 115 and a third innings, 29 walks, 65 strikeouts. Not the uh, the biggest strikeout pitcher that the Red Hawks have. That would be Carly Nance or Grace Luterer who we may see tomorrow. But this will be Madison Carr to lead it off for Utah Valley. And their lineup looks pretty similar to their game one lineup. Carr tries to drop down a bunt and misses, and it's a strike. And so Madrigal coming out, delivering strike one. They do have uh, a little bit of a a change in the Utah Valley lineup as – Riley Thorpe will be the designated player in this one. She'll be, she'll bat fifth. Let's go through the lineup real quick. Madison Carr in center. Lino Rebolledo in left. Kalina Shepard, the catcher. Michaela Thompson at first. Riley Thorpe, the designated player. Megan Gibbs at third. Carly Olson at second. And she did not play in the last game. Uh, Donye Alberton at short this game. Moving over a spot as Carr sends this one to Kawadi. And Kawadi gets it over to first for the out. Laney Bettencourt will play right field and bat ninth again, as she did in the first game. And Brooke Carter will uh, pitch for Utah Valley when they come up, uh, when uh, Seattle U comes up in the bottom of the first. Kawadi with the throw over to first for the first out. And that'll bring up Lena Rebolledo. And she takes one just outside from Madrigal. Red Hawks, the uh, same lineup as they had in the first game, other than the pitcher. And uh, she does, Madrigal does get that outside corner on that one. Count goes to one and one. Anna Sasaki in left, Vigiano in center, Ty Wilson in right, and then around the infield for the Red Hawks. Brooke Milder at third, Madison Kawadi at short, Lily Garcia at second, and Cameron Coleman at first. Kaylin Hill behind the plate. And, of course, Stephanie Madrigal in the circle. And the Red Hawks would like to see Madrigal just get back to what she was doing before she was injured. And she gets strike two on the inside corner there. Yeah, Madrigal never afraid to go inside. You can see that ball coming. feels like it's coming in at your wrist, and it just bites across the plate there at the last second. She gets that ball across along with the drop ball. She can be unhittable at times. Two and two. That one missed outside. And the count goes full to Rebolledo. Rebolledo had a, a uh, hit in the first game. One for two. And she is uh, 
batting 385. That may have actually uh, be, have been her batting average coming into the weekend. As I uh, don't believe the stats have been updated. No. She was coming, in, she came into the weekend batting 383. So yeah, that 385 is, is correct. Just a couple of points on the, uh, the batting average either way. She's a good hitter. And she sends this one into shallow center. Vigiano coming on, and she'll be, she gets there in time to put it away for out number two. Yeah, good talk there. And that's what we needed on that last game when it was kind of in Bermuda's triangle there. You needed somebody to take control, and you could hear Vigiano all the way up here in the booth call for that ball. She knew she could get there, taking control for an easy out to number two. Here's Kalina Shepard, the catcher in this game, as uh, Jaden Barajas got the start behind the plate in the first game. Shepard gets the start behind the plate in this one. And she takes called strike one over the outside corner. Shepard batting 348, six home runs, 37 runs batted in. And the pitch on the way, misses off the plate. They are playing her to slap as uh, Sasaki close to the line and then Vigiano over into left center, leaving a big gap in right center. Swing and a miss. And that shocks me a little bit because she is pretty much everything but a slapper. She is a power lefty through and through. Um, I think with the spin a little bit, you're going to see Steph stay away from her, which is why they're going to play her left side. Um, but still, with she has the power to go pull this ball at any moment down the right field line. It's called strike three, and Madrigal retires the first three in the top of the first. And we will go to the bottom of the first on ESPN Plus in just a moment. No score after half an inning. Tastes like a Coke. We nailed it! Coke Zero Sugar. Have they nailed it? Sounds like they really nailed it, huh? Nailed it. And that's when you said... <sighs> so it really tastes like a Coke. Yeah, that's the point. Being a great father takes some heavy lifting and a whole lot of reps. Kids trust their dads. Their dads trust Goldberg Jones. My dad always told me, keep it simple. Work hard, save a little. Don't pay for anything you don't need. Enjoy what you got and hang on to it. Now that's true freedom, he'd say. He'd also say, finding people you trust, now that's worth more than all the bells and whistles. And like always, he was right. Welcome back to Logan Field. Bottom of the first inning, Greg Sexton and Katie Favilla with you on ESPN+. Plus. And the Red Hawks take a look at Brooke Carter. And she delivers strike one to Olivia Vigiano. Red Hawks with the top of the order. Vigiano, Wilson, and Kawadi coming up against Brooke Carter here in the bottom of the first. She's a junior with a 5.27 ERA, 9-9 nine and nine record, and has really kind of found her stride lately. Of course, we said the same thing about Zuniga in uh, game one. And uh, Burkhardt, though, really has, has uh, kind of found it over the last uh, few weeks. And she throws hard. She throws hard, and she throws strikes. She's got 98 Ks on the season, which is uh, fifth best in the whack. So she's not messing around. She's going to come and attack the ball and attack the zone. There's a strike on the outside corner to Vigiano, and the count goes to one and two. 98 strikeouts, as you mentioned, just 20 walks. 
So neither Zuniga or Carter tend to put people on with the walk. And uh, she's pitched 95 and two thirds innings on the season. And just missed off the plate there to Vigiano. And Vigiano didn't get a hit in her last game, so that snaps a, a four game, little four game hit streak she had going. Um, so let's see if she can get something started again here uh, in the second game. Two and two to Vigiano. And that one just missed. And the count goes full. Carter out of Spanish Fork, Utah. Transferred from Salt Lake Community College. She was with the Wolverines last year. Swing and a miss by Vigiano and Carter starts off with a strikeout. Yeah, that's a great pitch there. I mean, that's right where you want to throw a slapper, down and away. Just don't have enough bat to get there and just uh, make Vigiano swing over the top of it. So that'll bring up Ty Wilson, who went three for three in the first game of the doubleheader. And was really instrumental in getting things going. She let off, uh, or didn't lead off, but uh, her first at bat, she had a triple down the left field line. And she takes a strike here from Carter. And she was on base every time in that last game. Fouls this one off. Wilson now with her batting average back up to 296 as uh, she came into the weekend 281. But she's behind 0 and 2 here to Brooke Carter. Pitch on the way, missed outside. Madison Kawadi waiting on deck for Seattle U. And when you're facing Carter here, definitely a different pitcher than Zuniga. You have to quicken your hands up. You have to get your hands through the zone in order to send this ball somewhere. Swing and a miss, and Carter strikes out the first two hitters she sees in the ball game. And Wilson reaching for that one a little bit. Having a little chat with Madison Kawadi as she steps up to the plate. Yeah, and you can see how pumped Brooke Carter was. And she knows how big these games are. She wants to get her team to flush the last one. So good on her. She's thrown two really good strikeout pitches there um, to both Vigiano and Wilson. So if you're Kawadi right now, you got to go attack. Go right at her. Here is Madison Kawadi with two outs and the base is empty. And that one right down the pipe, but uh, may have been a bit high as ball one. And the count 1-0 and oh to Madison Kawadi, the shortstop for the Red Hawks. That one catches the outside corner. Joe Mihelich calling balls and strikes in this one. Davis Nixich down the first baseline and Robert Huff, the, the third base umpire for this one. Kawadi with a 1-1 one, one count. And the pitch on the way. And that one just missed for ball two. Two and one to Madison Kawadi, junior transfer from Livermore, California. That one hits her. And Kawadi has now been hit by a pitch 16 times this year. That breaks the Seattle U single season record, does it not? I believe it does. I, it's not a record I would like, but you know what? She'll take it. Her name's in the record books. Uh, there you go. Bailey Thompson had 15 <laughs> just last year. Yep. And now Madison Kawadi eclipses that. Of course, you know, not, not exactly, uh, as you said, the record that you really want, but you get on base when you get hit by a pitch. Absolutely. Here's Carly Nance, swing and a miss for strike one. Carly Nance was just dominant in the circle in that first game and uh, only allowed two hits in five innings. Takes that one outside. 
Carter really is trying to hit that outside corner quite a bit so far in the early going here. One and one to Nance. Carly Nance finished that game with eight strikeouts. And no walks. Yeah, and those eight strikeouts just add to her now 400-plus uh, strikeouts on her career. So now just her and Hall of Famer Aaron Martin are the only two pitchers in Seattle U history to have over 400 Ks. We've talked about Aaron Martin. She was a force to be reckoned with. She uh, was an impressive, impressive pitcher, and she's got the Hall of Fame numbers to show it. But uh, Garley Nance is putting her stamp on it as well for sure. Nance ahead now, three and one, after taking the first pitch for a strike. Kawadi on it first, and Nance walks. As that one missed outside. And so the Red Hawks, first two hitters struck out. Next two hitters reach, hit by pitch and a walk. So the Red Hawks have yet to come up with a hit in the ball game. But Kalen Hill really pounded the base, or the softball rather, in uh, the first game, and she'll get up there and try to get another hit here. She had two hits, including a double to drive in a couple of runs in game one. And the pitch on the way. This one is hit deep to right field, and that one is gone. And it got out of here in a hurry. Kalen Hill jumps on it and drills it over the right field fence just underneath the scoreboard and the Red Hawks have a three nothing lead just like that. Man, that got out of here quick. I mean, she is just feeling that oppo taco today. Everything has been right field, right center. She blasts that ball over the right field fence, no doubt about it. We saw Kaylin Hill, and I don't know if you were here, I was calling the Robert Morris games with uh, Izzy Geronimo but uh, she had a home run in each of those and then had not had another one until this week. She homered at UW, and now another one here, her fifth of the season. RBIs 27, 28, and 29 for the freshman catcher for the Red Hawks. And that's the thing with the power that Brooke Carter provides. If you can get into a ball, that ball's going to fly out of here. So you just have to get your hands and your timing right, and she will provide the power to get this ball into some gaps and over some fences. So Brooke Carter started off with two strikeouts and then three quick runs, a hit by pitch, a walk, and then a three-run home run by Kaylin Hill. Here's Lily Garcia, who had a three-run home run in the first inning of the last game. This one is into shallow right center field. Coming on, Madison Carr is there to make the play, and that'll do it for the Red Hawks in the first inning. But they get three on the board, and they lead 3-0 as we head to the bottom or the top of the second on ESPN+. Plus. Goldberg Jones, 1-800-DIVORCE. You have questions? We have answers. Protecting Northwest husbands and fathers since 1995. Call 1-800-DIVORCE. I mean, nobody wants to jump through extra hoops when it's already so daunting. You just want to be able to focus on the exciting part, the style, the layout, the materials, like making it home. Yeah, and not having to double up on a construction loan and permanent financing, it just saves a ton of headache. It, it's really just an all-in-one solution. And that's what's made all the difference. We should seek to bring a better world into being through our students. students, students, students. 
Welcome back to Seattle University. Greg Sexton and Katie Favilla with you on ESPN Plus for the top of the second inning. As the Wolverines will send up their four, five, and six hitters here, Thompson, Thorpe, and Gibbs. And Michaela Thompson takes the first pitch from Stephanie Madrigal for ball one. Madrigal went, uh, retired the first uh, three hitters in the first inning. And she gets a called strike here on Thompson. <laughs> Mentioned this in the first game, but uh, Michaela Thompson transferred from Dixie State to play for her dad here at Utah Valley as he takes over as the uh, head coach in his first year. Cody Thompson down there at third base. I love that. As for someone who played for her, her dad from 12U to 18U, um, I can appreciate a, a father-daughter coach-player uh, combo. I don't know if I could have done it in college, but uh, it, it's certainly cool to see, especially as a grad transfer, kind of your last year of eligibility going out uh, with your dad. One last hurrah. It's pretty cool. Madrigal got that one over the inside corner to even up the count, and this one is hit in foul territory, and Lily Garcia lays out and almost came up with it. Couldn't quite reach it. Got a glove on it, but uh, not quite able to get to it. Jeff Heeri coming to check up on her. I think she knocked the wind out of herself, but uh, that's a heck of a play. She covered a lot of ground there. You see where she's walking back to. Um, covered a lot of ground, and, yeah, just a little bit inch to her there. But, um, yeah, good slide there on the turf. So that one just goes for strike two. But uh, Garcia definitely gave it a full effort. And uh, she's, I think you're right that she just kind of had the wind knocked out of her there. Kind of shaking it off, get, getting back behind uh, second base. This one has hit in foul territory again. This one well out of Garcia's reach, and Ty Wilson can't get to it either. She's probably like, thank goodness. I didn't want to go for that one. <laughs> Needs a little rest. So it stays two and two. On Michaela Thompson in a little bit of a battle with Stephanie Madrigal here in the top of the second. Pitch on the way. That one inside. I don't know how I don't know how that one missed her. Looks like it was coming straight at her. Yeah, and there's that uncomfortable inside pitch that Steph throws. I mean, she has no fear of going right at you. Three and two. Thompson sends one off to the right of Kawadi, and she can't quite get to it. It's into left center field for a base hit. And so Michaela Thompson leads off the second with a single. Yeah, and with all those balls, she had hit to the right side. I think Kawadi was just cheating just a step uh, up the middle a little bit and just far enough out to, to not get it on the dive. So Thompson, the leadoff single here in the second. And now Riley Thorpe will come to the plate. Thorpe now batting 242. Two home runs, seven RBIs, making her 25th start of the year. And that one didn't miss by a whole lot off that outside corner. But it's ball one to Riley Thorpe. Thorpe, the designated player in this one. And this one is hit, and it, Coleman takes it on the short hop, goes to second, gets the lead runner, and the throw back to first, not nearly in time to get Riley Thorpe charging down the first baseline. But uh, Coleman making the smart play there, being able to get the lead runner. Yeah, absolutely. I just think the ball just – wasn't hit quite hard enough for her to catch it in the air, but like you said, really good smart play to get the lead runner there. See if you can turn it here and get out of the inning. Megan Gibbs to the plate. Nine home runs, 23 runs batted in, and a 308 average. Gibbs, redshirt freshman out of Lilburn, Georgia. She takes ball one. 
And it feels like both pitchers are gonna trying to establish what that outside corner looks like. Brooke Carter was trying to hit it. Steph Madrigal now is trying to hit it. Um, so on both edges, you're just trying to feel out in these early innings kind of how much the umpire will give you on that outside corner. That one is ball two. And Kalen Hill putting the hand up. Not sure uh, where that one missed. I should say, just feeling out the whole strike zone, not just the outside corner. 2-0, oh, the count. And this one is hit to Milder at third. She goes to second for one. That's all they'll get. And Brooke Milder, again, gets the lead runner at second base. Yeah, and she's just been so solid when she plays third. She's been playing second um, in some different weekends uh, this last couple months with, with people out with injuries and sickness, but she's just been a vacuum at third. It's good to see. This will bring up Carly Olson for her first at bat of the day. She is batting 200 on the season, no home runs, three RBIs, and just making her 14th start. And she takes a called strike here. Olsen out of Corona, California. Madrigal delivers and misses with that one for ball one. One and one to Carly Olsen with Megan Gibbs on at first base now. And this one is hit into shallow right center and it's gonna drop and Wilson fumbled it a bit. It's gonna allow Gibbs to get into third base. She, I believe, would have gotten there anyway, but uh, Carly Olson checks in with a base hit and stops at first. Yeah, I think you're right. I think Gibbs was going to third on that no matter what, especially with two outs, right? She was going on the pitch, on the swing, no matter what. So it gives her a head start. Um, but that's just not playing the turf quite right. It bounced up a little bit higher than I think she was ready for on Wilson. But, you know, you get out of it here and it doesn't hurt you. Here's Donye Alberton. And she takes ball one from Stephanie Madrigal. So Wolverines a little something cooking here in the second inning. Madrigal trying to get out of it unscathed. And just missed there for ball two. Yeah, and this is what Utah Valley does. I mean, everyone up and down their lineup has got RBIs for days. Everybody knows how to clutch up when there's runners in scoring position, it feels like, on this Wolverine team. That one is inside for ball three. Madrigal trying to find that strike zone. Three and oh to Alberton, and there's a strike to go to three and one. Wolverines with two hits in the ball game. Madrigal has not walked anybody. And both of those hits in this inning. And now she has walked Donye Elberton, and the bases are loaded for Utah Valley here in the top of the second for Laney Bettenker. And if you're the Wolverines, this is where you really need to take advantage of your opportunity. Absolutely. You want to see if you can get any of those, any or all of those three runs back here. And Bettenker, even though she's a slapper, even though she's your tiny nine-hole hitter, she's got 10 RBIs on the season. She knows how to get these runners in. Um, if you're the infield right now for Seattle U, you have to cover all the holes. You have to be ready for a hard ground ball, know exactly where you're going to throw it. 0-1 oh the count. And there's a called strike again. And Cody Thompson is uh, not happy with the call there. As we can hear up here in the press box. Count is 0-2. Base is loaded. Top of the second. Pitch on the way. And she checks her swing there and takes ball one. One and two to Laney Bettenker. They get bat in this ball game, even though we're just in the second inning. Wolverines with a chance. And a swing and a miss. Madrigal gets out of the inning 
and she has gotten a strikeout to end both the first and second inning, and she leaves the bases loaded here in the second. 3 nothing Red Hawks as we go to the bottom of the second on ESPN+. Plus. class. The spirit of scientific collaboration. It's a real nice space to be in. I'm really excited to meet new people, be in a new environment, make new friends. Seattle University is a student-centered university. University, we should seek to bring a better world into being through our students. I mean, nobody wants to jump through extra hoops when it's already so daunting. You just want to be able to focus on the exciting part. The style, the layout, the materials, like making it home. Yeah, and not having to double up on a construction loan and permanent financing, it just saves a ton of headache. It, it's really just an all-in-one solution. And that's what's made all the difference. Welcome back to Logan Field in Seattle. Greg Sexton and Katie Favilla with you on ESPN Plus as we move to the bottom of the second inning. And the Red Hawks will send up their seven, eight, and nine hitters. This is Brooke Milder leading it off against Brooke Carter. And she takes strike one. So Milder, Coleman, and Sasaki here in the bottom of the second for Seattle U. Brooke Carter got two quick strikeouts, had the bases empty and two outs, and then hit a hit a Kawadi, walked Nance, and gave up a three-run home run to Kalen Hill. Then Utah Valley loaded the bases in the top of the second, and they were unable to plate any runs. Still early in this ball game. And Carter ahead in the count, 0-2. That one missed up high to Milder for ball one. One and two. And here's Carter's pitch on the way. Misses outside. Count goes to two and two on Brooke Milder. Batting 273, no home runs, 11 runs batted in. That one just missed. Carter wanted it, and so did the uh, Utah Valley side there. That's a good pitch inside corner. Uh, I think it's just a little tight, but um, but a good pitch there nonetheless. Three and two to Milder. And that one misses low and in for ball four. And that one definitely missed. The other one a little closer. So Brooke Milder leads off the bottom of the second with a walk. And here is Cameron Coleman. Coleman, a redshirt junior out of Walla Walla, Washington, but as we said, a red shirt. So she is actually taking part in the senior day festivities and uh, will be graduating. And there is a called strike on the outside corner. You know, and we'll see as Cam kind of looked down there to Coach Hirai, we'll see what Coach Hirai wants to do here. I feel like he was really hit and run happy early in the season. We were seeing hit and runs everywhere. Uh, and then he's kind of taking a pause a little bit. But, you know, I, I think it's kind of nice when you're facing somebody like Carter who throws so hard. You don't have to think about it. You're just like, I'm going to swing. I'm going to put a good cut on the ball and see where it goes. It takes a little bit of the, the guesswork out of it um, just to see if you can get bat on ball. She does not get bat on ball there, swing and a miss, and Carter with the strikeout. That is her third of the ball game. 
And that will bring up Hannah Sasaki, the left fielder for the Red Hawks. Sasaki also being honored tomorrow on Senior Day. As uh, just three players this year for the Red Hawks. There's strike one over the outside corner. Coleman, Sasaki, and of course, Carly Nance. Calling it a career here at Seattle U. And Sasaki takes that one outside for ball one. Sasaki had a hit in the first game. And then they pinch hit for her with McKenna Crum in her second at bat. Or what would have been her second at bat. This one is fouled off. Yeah, she had a really nice slap down the, the left field line there that just stayed foul that she was able to get on with. Uh, let's see if she can get her hands through a little bit quicker, get something, you know, same spot there. You just got to quicken up the hands a little bit with Brooke Carter. One-two pitch on the way, and she just kind of stays alive with that one. Almost a, uh, a bunt. Yeah, I think she was a little fooled on the up ball, but was able to get it foul enough uh, to stay alive. So the count stays one and two. And here's Carter's pitch. And slap to third, Gibbs playing in and gets it over there just in time to get Sasaki close play at first base. Yeah, really close. Good uh, hands there by Gibbs to shoot that over there. Good quick release. Milder gets into second base on the play, and that'll bring up Olivia Vigiano. Vigiano struck out in her first at bat and has not had a hit yet today. Looking for her first one here with a runner on at second. Red Hawks a 3-0 lead, and this one is fouled back. We mentioned it in the first game. The uh, second place in the West Division on the line between these two teams. And that is an important uh, seed to get going into the WAC tournament. As uh, if you're third in the West, you got to play on day one. This is Vigiano sending one into center field. Madison Carr doesn't have to move a whole lot and makes the play out there. That'll do it for the Red Hawks in the second. They do not score. They lead 3-0 after two on ESPN+. Plus. McCarthy Realty has been helping people with their real estate needs in and around Seattle since 1964. Today, we are partnered with Coldwell Banker to provide the personal service of a local company and the expansive breadth of CB's international marketing power. From your Seattle area backyard to every place on the planet, we have you covered with every sale we contribute a portion of our revenue to Seattle University. Benton McCarthy Realty. We're the team to reach your goals with integrity, commitment, and successful conclusions. It is over. The Seattle Supersonics have won the NBA World Championship Series. Hey, hey, sir. Oh How are you feeling about today? I'm feeling great, man. We just won the championship. We're going to win another one again and again and again, and it's just going to be great. I'm telling you. I'm telling everybody. We don't have to go. We're champs now. We need a cooler mascot. Like what? I don't know. Something handsome. More than a quarter million fans agree. And that is how Seattle welcomed the world champions home. I mean, nobody wants to jump through extra hoops when it's already so daunting. You just want to be able to focus on the exciting part. The style, the layout, the materials. Like, making it home. Yeah, and not having to double up on a construction loan and permanent financing. It just saves a ton of headache. It, it's really just an all-in-one solution. And that's what's made all the difference.
Welcome back to Logan Field in Seattle. Greg Sexton and Katie Favilla with you on ESPN Plus as the Wolverines send up the top of their order here in the third. Carr, Rebolledo, and Shepard against Stephanie Madrigal. And Carr showed bunt there but pulled the bat back as the uh, Red Hawk out, or, uh, corner infielders were charging. Seeing some emergency vehicles going down 12th Avenue here. And maybe responding to something other as this one is hit and it's foul on the third base side. And so Carr will come back to the plate. Yeah, good quick response there by Brooke. But yeah, I apologize for all of the sirens in the background. We could see a, uh, a cloud of smoke going up beyond the right center field fence a few blocks in that direction. And uh, that seems to be under control. Now here's a, a ground ball to Kawadi at short and she gets it over to first in time for the out. So one up and one down for the Wolverines here in the third. Yeah, Madison Carr has just gotten unlucky. She's just hitting them right at Kawadi. She's not getting the left or the right. Um, good slaps hard into the ground, but Kawadi's able to just dig them out right at her. Here is Lena Rebolledo as uh, she is 0 for 1 in this one. 380, uh, 382 now on the season. Five home runs, 34 RBIs. Both Lena Rebolledo and Eleni Bettencourt out of Riverside, California, where CBU is located. So they, uh, I don't know if they played at CBU this year. Or, um, that is, a, when they do play there, that is a homecoming game for those two players. Count one and one here. Yeah, and both those players, good players. CBU is probably sad they couldn't poach them to stay home. 1-1 one, one pitch from Madrigal, misses for ball two. Pretty much everybody in the WAC has uh, a few California natives on the roster. <laughs> and Utah Valley no different. This one hit and Coleman knocks it down and she'll have an easy play over to first base. She beats Rebolledo to the bag. And so Coleman makes the play there. Two down here in the top of the third. Yeah, and so far just really good solid defense from Seattle U in both these games. Um, just infield being vacuums all over, outfield taking control, making plays, so everybody doing their job. Here is Kalena Shepard, the catcher. And she fouls it off and may have, uh, yeah, not sure if she got her, her foot or her yeah. ankle there. The way she came out of the batter's box kind of looked like it, but not showing any uh, any signs now. And we just have a cascade of emergency vehicles on 12th Avenue. They just keep coming. One and one they count. To Shepard. For those who have not been here that are watching on ESPN Plus, Seattle U located right in the heart of Seattle. Just a little bit east of downtown as uh, Shepard takes up high for ball three. Three and one. to Kalina Shepard. And she takes ball four. No, she thought she took ball four. She was headed to first base. Joe Mihalich says, nope, hold up. That's strike two. So Madrigal gets that outside corner. Count goes to three and two. Pitch on the way. This one is hit and it's eats up Kawadi there as uh, she got a glove on and it kicked up off of her glove and into left field. 
So a base hit for Kalena Shepard. Yeah, Shepard hit that ball hard, and I think it was just hard and sinking right down at uh, Kawadi there. Wasn't able to, to fully get a glove on it. Good, strong hit, though, for Shepard. This is Michaela Thompson coming to the plate for the second time. And uh, right back to Madrigal in the circle. She'll go over to first for the easy out, and that'll do it for the Wolverines in the third. And they trail 3-0 as the Red Hawks come to bat in the bottom of the third in just a moment on ESPN+. Plus. Goldberg Jones, 1-800-DIVORCE. You have questions? We have answers. Protecting Northwest husbands and fathers since 1995. Call 1-800-DIVORCE. I mean, nobody wants to jump through extra hoops when it's already so daunting. You just want to be able to focus on the exciting part, the style, the layout, the materials, like making it home. Yeah, and not having to double up on a construction loan and permanent financing, it just saves a ton of headache. It's really just an all-in-one solution. And that's what's made all the difference. We should seek to bring a better world into being through our students. Welcome back to Seattle University as we still have sirens in the background. <laughs> Greg Sexton and Katie Pavilla with you here on ESPN Plus for the bottom of the third as the Red Hawks with a 3-0 lead will send their two, three, and four hitters to the plate against Brooke Carter. Got some emergency vehicles going the other way up Cherry. And uh, yeah, we're just kind of right in the heart of it here at Logan Field in Seattle. Brooke Carter getting ready to deal to Ty Wilson to start the bottom of the third. And Wilson just got a piece of that for strike one. Wilson struck out in her first at bat against Carter. She had three hits in the first game. Trying to get back in the hit column again here. Takes that one up high and outside for ball one. Wilson, Kawadi, and Nance coming to the plate here for Seattle U in the bottom of the third. Red Hawks took the first game eight to nothing and they lead three nothing here in the second game. Wilson fouls this one away. If the Red Hawks can hang on to this lead, they would go up three games in the standings over Utah Valley with just four games left in the season. And uh, however, if Utah Valley is able to plate some runs here, they would, and they if they uh, end up coming back to win this one, they would get back within a game. As that one is fouled away by Wilson. So big game here, the Red Hawks really could use this one. Would uh, win the series for them. They were, on, they were on quite a roll. I believe they had won 16 WAC series in a row dating back to 2018. And then they got swept by Grand Canyon here two weeks ago and then lost two out of three to CBU last weekend. Yeah, winning this series would just feel like you're back on track, right? I mean, take standings out of it, take second place out of it. You just feel like you're kind of getting back to your own a little bit, which would feel good for this squad. This one's fouled back, and Wilson battling Carter here to lead off the bottom of the third. Wolverines no runs on three hits. The Red Hawks three runs on just one hit. 
And that was the Kalen Hill three run home run. Two and two to Wilson. And she sends that one to second and the throw over in plenty of time by Carly Olson. And so one up and one down here in the bottom of the third. Yeah, good battle there. Ty Wilson just rolls over that a little bit, but um, good battle um, from, from Brooke Carter to, to get Ty Wilson to ground that to second. Here's Madison Kawadi, shortstop for the Red Hawks. She scored a run on the uh, Kalen Hill home run in the first. She was hit by a pitch from Brooke Carter. That one misses up high for ball one. Carter looks in and delivers and missed down low with ball two. So Kawadi ahead in the count here. One out, bottom of the third, base is empty. Red Hawks with all three of their runs on that home run in the first inning. And that one just missed for ball three. Yeah, Kawadi's just being patient. She didn't chase up, she didn't chase in, she didn't chase out. So she's just a really patient hitter. Um, and when she attacks, she attacks hard. Uh, let's see if it gives her the green light for three and oh. Carter looks in and delivers. And Kawadi takes that one over the inside corner for strike one. Not sure whether she had the green light, but uh, I would give everybody the green light. It's just fun to swing 3-0. and It's always fun <laughs> to swing, regardless of the count. But, yeah, 3-0, and why not? That one misses for ball four. And Kawadi on base for the second time in the game. Was hit by a pitch and now is on board with a walk. Here's Carly Nance. Nance picked up an RBI in the first game to give her 54 now on the season, which leads the WAC by a, a pretty good margin. Actually, uh, Grant Canyon's got a few players uh, not that far behind Carly Nance coming into the weekend. They had uh, 48 runs batted in. No, I'm sorry, 46 apiece from Danae Chapman. Kristen Fifield and Caitlin Dunkel. So GCU just a juggernaut this year. Yeah, they just got hitters and speed, hitters and speed. Nance takes a strike. And the count one and one. Carter's pitch on the way, and it's fouled back. Count goes to one and two. One out here in the bottom of the third. And Madison Kawadi on base with the walk. Brooke Carter's third walk of the game. And she has struck out three as well. Nance swings and misses at some high heat there. And Carter pumped up about that one. Yeah, that's a big out for her. Um, you know, any out to get Carly Nance off the base pass is a good out, um, but really makes her chase reared back and, and threw that up ball hard. So that'll bring up Kaylin Hill for her second at bat, and we know how the first one went. Ended up over the right field fence. And uh, she has three home runs at Logan Field, five on the season. All three of her home runs here have been in, in that right field area. She takes strike one here from Brooke Carter. Of course, she got one to left at UW a few days ago. Yeah, she sent that one out to the water. 0-1 here. Carter delivers, and that one missed up high. Count evens up at a ball and a strike. 
Yeah, and Seattle U, just to, to add on to what they what they scored already, they, they really need to start looking down. Don't chase that up ball that Brooke Carter's been, been hanging with right now. Really look down, look in the zone. 1-1 one, one pitch, and Hill fouls it away. And the count one and two now. Kalen Hill at the plate, and Lily Garcia waiting on deck. Each of them has hit a three-run home run today. Carter missed outside there, and the count even at two and two. Carter with the pitch, swing and a miss. And Carter with a couple of big strikeouts there to end the bottom of the third. Red Hawks go scoreless in the third. They lead 3-0. We'll be back with the fourth inning on ESPN+. Plus. Tastes like a Coke. We nailed it! Coke Zero Sugar. Have they nailed it? Sounds like they really nailed it, huh? Nailed it. And that's when you said... So it really tastes like a Coke. Yeah, that's the point. Being a great father takes some heavy lifts and a whole lot of reps. Kids trust their dads. Their dads trust both their parents. My dad always told me, keep it simple. Work hard, save a little. Don't pay for anything you don't need. Enjoy what you got and hang on to it. Now that's true freedom, he'd say. He'd also say, finding people you trust, now that's worth more than all the bells and whistles. And like always, he was right. Welcome back to Logan Field, top of the fourth inning. Greg Sexton and Katie Favilla with you on ESPN Plus. Red Hawks with a 3 0 lead. And the Wolverines going to send up their five, six, and seven hitters here in the fourth. Riley Thorpe, Megan Gibbs, and Carly Olson. Stephanie Madrigal has given up three hits, one walk, and has struck out two. And uh, had the bases loaded in the second inning, got out of that without allowing a run. It's good to see her back out there as uh, she came off the field a couple of weeks ago against Grand Canyon. She was playing first base at that time. And uh, she delivers ball one here to Riley Thorpe. And she was just trying to stretch and Looked like probably was a pulled hamstring. But uh, back out there in the circle for the Red Hawks today. 2-0 and here to Riley Thorpe. And that one misses outside. So Stephanie Madrigal trying to find the strike zone here in the top of the fourth. Yeah, and if you're Utah Valley right now, you still got plenty of ball game left. Three nothing with your bats is nothing, but you gotta you, you gotta take care of the pitches that are in the zone. You gotta swing hard, and uh, it it it's the the strike zone today. I think on both sides, everybody's been guessing a little bit on what's going to be what. Um, so if you like it, swing at it. Don't leave it up to the umpire. Go and take your pitch. That was three and zero. Oh, so she. Uh don't know whether she had the green light there. She takes ball four now. And so Stephanie Madrigal, her second walk of the ball game. 
Walks have not really been much of an issue for either of these pitchers, but they have put some uh, some runners on base with the walk today. As uh, Carter has walked, I believe, three. She's walked at least two. We'll check on that. Stephanie Madrigal now two walks as Megan Gibbs comes to the plate and it takes a called strike. Riley Thorpe on it first. And this one is hit to Kawadi. She's got a charge, gets the throw to second just in time to get Riley Thorpe diving into second base. And that was a close play. Ball was slowly hit to Kawadi. And she just gets the lead runner. Yeah, good first baseman stretch there by Lily Garcia. I think it, it helped her. Um, barreling down on her at second, but I think that extra little stretch there helped get that lead runner. Just to uh, confirm, Brooke Carter does have three walks, but five strikeouts. And Madrigal gets the inside corner there on Carly Olson. Olson had a hit in her first at bat. Wolverines have three of them on the day. And that one misses for ball one. One and one to Carly Olson batting with Megan Gibbs on at first base and one out here in the top of the fourth. And now Kaylin Hill gonna go out and have a chat with her pitcher. Making sure to talk through that glove and uh, <laughs> not have anybody reading any lips. Pulling a Houston Astros, stealing signs, you know, the whole bit. The Astros got caught. <laughs> and Banging on garbage cans. You're right. They, they probably were <laughs> the uh, most egregious yes. uh, sign stealers. Looks like there there was uh, some investigations into to the Red Sox a little while ago, and now the Yankees. Um, there was something that came up about that the other day. Take them all down. This one has popped up, and Coleman has a play on it. She's going to put it away in foul territory, and that one stayed in inside the uh, inside the fence there, and so. Out number two there as uh, Olsen pops it up. Yeah, good talk there by Cam just to come over. Don't make it a tough play for Kaylin Hill. Definitely keep Steph Madrigal on the mound. Make that play uh, for an easy out. Here's Donye Alberton. And she takes that one just inside for ball one. Two outs now, top of the fourth, and Gibbs on at first. And Alberton fouls that one back. One and one to count. Red Hawks with all three of their runs on the Kalen Hill home run in the bottom of the first. Still, that's their only hit of the ball game. Pitch on the way from Madrigal, and Alberton tried to lay down a bunt, and it goes foul. Yeah, and she's keeping everybody honest, right? She's keeping the whole infield on their toes. Brooke Milder, that's one of those things. If you're not expecting it with two outs, right, playing back at the bag, and somebody lays down a drop bunt like that, you kind of go, <gasps> it makes you stop, right? So everybody has to be aware um, that she's got the wheels enough to lay down that that drop bunt to just kind of kickstart this offense for UVU. Two outs and now two strikes. So most likely not going to be trying it again, but you never know. Two and two the count now as Madrigal misses outside. It's a good idea though. Yeah, like you said, keeping everybody honest. Two, two pitch on the way, swing and a miss. Madrigal, another strikeout to end an inning. And that is her third strikeout. All have come ending innings, the first, second, and now fourth. 
three nothing Red Hawks as we go to the bottom of the fourth on ESPN Plus. So high tech, first class. The spirit of scientific collaboration. It's a real nice space to be in. excited to meet new people, be in a new environment, make new friends. Seattle University is a student-centered university. As a university, we should seek to bring a better world into being through our students. I mean, nobody wants to jump through extra hoops when it's already so daunting. You just want to be able to focus on the exciting part. The style, the layout, the materials, like making it home. Yeah, and not having to double up on a construction loan and permanent financing, it just saves a ton of headache. It, it's really just an all-in-one solution. And that's what's made all the difference. Welcome back to Logan Field in Seattle, bottom of the fourth inning. And the Red Hawks with a 3-0 lead. And as you were mentioning, Katie, before the or during the break, Brooke Carter throwing a one-hitter down 3-0. Yeah, I mean, she's throwing her butt off. But, yeah, just the hit by pitch and the walk didn't come at a good time before your one hit you've given up. Um, you know, and 3-0, you don't want to sit on it if you're Seattle U. The, the thing that felt good about the first game was that you scored in every inning, right? You had base runners, you made contact, you hit balls in gaps, right? So you don't want to sit on this 3 nothing lead and think that's good enough. You got to get things going, keep the momentum flowing. Lily Garcia fouls that one down the right field line. It'll be Garcia, Milder, and Coleman coming up this inning for the Red Hawks. Garcia behind 0-2. Brooke Carter with five strikeouts already. Dealing here in the fourth. And Garcia just got a piece of that one to stay alive. That was that up ball you were talking about. Katie. Yeah, and she throws it hard. You can see how much spin she has on it, and she just cranks it. Garcia behind 0-2 still here. And here's the pitch. This one hit to second. And the throw over in plenty of time. Carly Olson makes the play. And one up and one down here in the bottom of the fourth. And more sirens. <laughs> this would be Brooke Milder coming to the plate. Milder walked in her first plate appearance. That was leading off the bottom of the second. Milder sends this one deep into left, not deep enough, as Reboyeto moves back a few steps and puts it away. So that is quickly two outs here for the Red Hawks in the bottom of the fourth. Yeah, good hip turns over there by Reboyeto, just uh, going back on a ball, playing Brooke Milder a little bit in, but no problem to make that second out. Here's Cameron Coleman with the bases empty and two outs in the bottom of the fourth. And Brooke Carter, just the one hit and uh, really has settled in since that first inning. And really in the first inning, she struck out two to start the game. And then just kind of had uh, the uh, hit by pitch, the walk and the home run and this is what she's been doing in the last couple weeks. Both her and Katie Zaniga have both really just pitched really well. Her offense hasn't backed her up these this last or this game, excuse me, um, or last game with Katie Zaniga. And that's been the difference here is is Utah Valley. I mean, l last weekend against Dixie State, they scored 27 runs throughout the weekend. So this is you've kind of swung the other direction on the offensive side. 
That one misses for ball one is uh, on the second strike there. Coleman went up, uh, at, went at a uh, pitch that was up high and was kicking herself a little bit for swinging at it. Lays off of that one as one and two. Pitch on the way. That one misses up high. Yeah, and it's so easy to sit up here. Like I said in the first game with Carly Nance's rise ball, it's so easy to sit up here and be like, lay off the rise ball, right? It looks like it starts at your letters. You know what's going to end up in your eyeballs, but it looks so good coming out of the hand. It's such a hard pitch at any level, at any age to lay off of because it looks so good coming out of the hand. It's one of the hardest things to do in softball. And another strikeout for Brooke Carter, and that'll do it for the Red Hawks here in the fourth. Carter's sixth strike out of the ball game. 3-0 Red Hawks as we go to the fifth in just a moment on ESPN+. Plus. McCarthy Realty has been helping people with their real estate needs in and around Seattle since 1964. Today, we are partnered with Coldwell Banker to provide the personal service of a local company and the expansive breadth of CB's international marketing power. From your Seattle area backyard to every place on the planet, we have you covered. With every sale, we contribute a portion of our revenue to Seattle University. Benton McCarthy Realty. We're the team to reach your goals with integrity, commitment, and successful conclusions. It is over. The Seattle Supersonics have won the NBA World Championship Series. Hey, hey, sir. Oh How are you feeling about today? I'm feeling great, man. We just won the championship. We're going to win another one again and again and again, and it's just going to be great. I'm telling you. I'm telling everybody. Weedle has to go. Has to go. We're champs now. We need a cooler mascot. Like what? I don't know. Something handsome. More than a quarter million fans agree. And that is how Seattle welcomed the world champions home. I mean, nobody wants to jump through extra hoops when it's already so daunting. You just want to be able to focus on the exciting part. The style, the layout, the materials, like making it home. Yeah, and not having to double up on a construction loan and permanent financing, it just saves a ton of headache. It, it's really just an all-in-one solution. And that's what's made all the difference. Welcome back to Logan Field in Seattle. Greg Sexton and Katie Favilla with you on ESPN Plus. And the Red Hawks with a three nothing lead over the Wolverines as the Wolverines send up their nine one and two hitters here in the top of the fifth. Already the top of the fifth, this game moving along. Laney Bettenker at the plate. First game, of course, we only played four and a half innings. Bettenker sends this one up the middle, and Madrigal couldn't get a glove on it. It's into center field for a base hit. Yeah. Fourth hit of the game. Just pops that right past Steph's glove. Um. The umpire is coming out from behind the plate, and he's going to call Laney Bettenker out. Step out of the box. I'm going to assume from a slapper's perspective. Let's see. She, he's bringing her back to the plate. He didn't call her out. So the count, 0-2. Oh or was it a dead ball? Maybe it went off her foot. That could be. I'm not sure. Didn't look like it got yeah, her foot. This at all. one is hit foul on the first base line, or on the first base side, rather. Yeah, that looked pretty clean to me, for sure. Clean ball right up the middle. But, um, yeah, Steph way ahead here, 0-2. Oh You'll take it if you're Seattle U. See if we end up getting a clarification on what was called there. But uh, Bettenker back in the box and fouls this one off. <laughs> the uh, on-deck hitter, Madison Carr, not really sure where it was. It was ducking a little bit. 0-2 <laughs> oh still here to Bettenker as she's fouled off the last couple. Yeah, I agree. That just looked like a clean single right up the middle. That one is foul. Well, she's got putting a good battle together, even though she's been down 0-2 and thought she had a single. Uh, this is a good battle against Steph.
Milder playing well in at third. And Bettencourt swings and misses, and Madrigal with the strikeout, her fourth of the ball game. First time she has not ended an inning with a strikeout. Or I should say first time she's had a strikeout that didn't end an inning. Yeah, and the high heat, not exactly uh, Steph's M.O. as a drop ball pitcher, but she'll take it if it uh, is out number one. Here is Madison Carr, 0 for 2 in this one. Had a hit in the first game. And Madrigal's pitch, and she drops down a bunt. Madrigal's going to come out and get it, get it to first base in time for the out. Madison Carr hustling down the line. Madrigal, though, fielding her position well. Yeah, that is a bang, bang play. Man, that's a good bunt. Puts it kind of right in no man's land, but Steph takes charge and gets her just by a hair. So two outs, base is empty, top of the fifth, and here is Lena Rebolledo. She has not made a huge, she did have a hit in the first game, not made a huge splash today, but we did see her in the WAC tournament last year and she was lighting things up for the Wolverines. Yeah, she's just been so consistent for Utah Valley. I mean, she's so good in that two hole behind Carr. Um, she plays a great left field and she's just got a heck of a power. Pitch on the way and that one misses by not a whole lot for ball two. Madrigal wanted that one. Also, she just looks cool. She like rocks these chains. I think one has her number on it. Like I am not that cool. She is just a stud out there. 2-0 pitch, misses inside for ball three and Madrigal throwing the hands up, a little frustrated. Again, still kind of trying to figure out Joe Mihalich's strike zone. So Rebolledo will take it. She's ahead 3-0. and oh. Pitch on the way. Called strike. Rebolledo showing bunt and pulling it back. Yeah, it's hard as a pitcher um, when you're this far into the ball game and you still don't feel like you can have a go-to side of the plate or a go-to spot. Um, you just don't quite know where he's feeling it on either side. And I think we felt that from both sides, both both Utah Valley with Brooke Carter and Stephanie Madrigal. They're just trying to figure out what they can have, um, you know, a ball, a ball, a ball and a half on either side. That's the third walk a, 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 uh, allowed by Madrigal. I was trying to say allowed and issued at the same time. <laughs> didn't come out right. This will be uh, Kalena Shepard coming to the plate now. So Rebolledo on with the two out walk. And there's strike one to Shepard. Kalena Shepard has a hit in this game and also has a strikeout. One for two. And this one up the middle into center field. Vigiano will come get it and keep Rebolledo at second. But uh, Wolverines, a little something going here in the top of the fifth. Yeah, and this is what they needed. Top five, you know, game, middle of the game, middle end of the game. You got to get something firing here if you want to stay in this ball game. It's only a 3 nothing ball game. That's nothing for Utah Valley, but you've got to string some hits together right now. You've got to come up clutch uh, with runners in scoring position right now. Red Hawks got their three on a home run. And Michaela Thompson at the plate now definitely has the power to leave the yard. Madrigal misses with ball one. So step in some trouble here in the fifth. Trying to get out of it. Left the bases loaded in the second inning. And gets a called strike there. One and one to Michaela Thompson. Thompson with a hit in the game. She's one for two. This one's fouled off above the Red Hawks dugout. Count goes to one and two. Madrigal looking for one more strike here to get out of the inning. Thompson trying to keep it going for the Wolverines. Pitch on the way. Outside, 
Count goes to two and two. Big spot in the ball game here. Red Hawks just a three nothing lead. Pitch on the way. And that one misses for ball three. The way Thompson turned around and walked the other way. I thought uh, she may have been wrong up there, but it didn't see it from the umpire. Three and two the count. Here's the pitch. This one is hit deep into right field. And that one is gone. And the Wolverines have tied it up at three here in the top of the fifth on a Michaela Thompson three-run home run. Kalen Hill had a three-run home run for the Red Hawks in the first. Michaela Thompson responds with a three-spot of her own here in the fifth. Yeah, Michaela Thompson makes this a brand new ball game. No doubt about it. And like I said, that was the point that you needed somebody to clutch up. Up and down this lineup, they've got ribbies all day long. That's exactly what you needed to do. This is why you got to keep scoring, right? It's 3-3, three, three, new ball game. Now here we go. Tenth home run of the season for Thompson. RBIs 42, 43, and 44 leading the Wolverines in runs batted in. And as you said, a brand new ball game. Wolverines trying to keep it going here in the fifth as Riley Thorpe takes a called strike and the count goes to 0-1. And if you're Steph, you just got to buckle down now, right? You've got to go attack. You've got two outs. Let your offense get back in, but you've got to lessen it right now. That one is off to the left of Kawadi. She makes a good play on it, showing some range there, gets to it, and gets the throw over to first for the out. And that'll do it for the Wolverines. They score three on a Michaela Thompson three-run home run. 3-3 three, three as we go to the bottom of the fifth. Goldberg Jones, 1-800-DIVORCE. You have questions? We have answers. Protecting Northwest husbands and fathers since 1995. Call 1-800-DIVORCE. I mean, nobody wants to jump through extra hoops when it's already so daunting. You just want to be able to focus on the exciting part, the style, the layout, the materials, like making it home. Yeah, and not having to double up on a construction loan and permanent financing, it just saves a ton of headache. It, it's really just an all-in-one solution. And that's what's made all the difference. we should seek to bring a better world into being through our students. Back at Logan Field in Seattle, bottom of the fifth inning, and the Wolverines just tied it up in the top of the fifth with a Michaela Thompson three-run home, three home run. And now Brooke Carter in a tie ball game, getting ready to go to work against the Red Hawks 9-1 and two hitters. Sasaki, Vigiano, and Wilson. I mean, and Brooke Carter was energized before she had any run support. Now she should just be jazzed because now you've got Brooke Carter with a whole new ball game now. Um, she was pumped to be out there throwing strikes and throwing hard before, and, and now Seattle U's just got to buckle down and go right at her. Carter with six strikeouts in the ball game. Three walks, but only one hit allowed. And that one went over the fence in right field. Off the bat of Kalen Hill. Sasaki fouls this one back. Count sits at one and two. Wolverines three runs on five hits. They've left five runners on base. Red Hawks three runs on a one hit. They've left two. 
And Sasaki sends one through the left side for a base hit to lead off the bottom of the fifth. Sasaki, a couple of hits today. Yeah, good to see. P timed the hands up perfectly. Nice slap through the 5 6 hole. Good to get some sw speed on before the top of the lineup. You've got a lot of small ball uh, things you can do here now with nobody out. Vigiano coming to the plate now, and Ty Wilson on deck. And yeah, speed in the 9 1 and 2 spots. We'll see what you what uh, Jeff Uri wants to do as Vigiano drops down a bunt, but it goes foul. And the count 0-1. Yeah, I like the bunt here too, especially because Vigiano struggled a little bit in in this game in the last. Um, you know, lay down a sack, which might turn into a bunt base hit. You never know with her speed. Uh, at least get somebody in scoring position so you can get to the middle of your lineup. 0-1 to Vigiano, pitch on the way. This one is hit into left field. Rebolledo moving back. She's got it, and she will make the catch for the first out of the inning. And Rebolledo was playing in a little bit there, but yeah. was able to get back to it in plenty of time. She plays such a lockdown left field. Um, yeah, even playing in on that, she had the wheels to go back and get it. Red Hawks, two hits in the game now. The home run and now the base hit by Sasaki here in the bottom of the fifth. And this is Ty Wilson taking a pitch off the outside corner for ball one. Wilson had three hits in the first game, 0 for 2 in this one, and has struck out once. She takes a called strike there. And the count evens up at a ball and a strike. And Sasaki's got the wheels to steal a bag here, but you have to make sure that you are safe. In a tie ball game, bottom of the fifth, you have to get there, right? You put on all the burners you can. Wilson pulls that one foul down the first baseline. That one got in on her hands a little bit. Count one and two now. Ty's got to really make sure she's not going to chase anything up in her eyes. Don't chase anything in the other, other batter's box. I think that's what Brooke Carter's going to go to, either way out or way up. One, two pitch to Wilson is up for ball two. And the count goes to two and two. Sasaki, just one stolen base on the season, but when she was not a uh, regular member of the starting outfield, they did use her as a pinch runner quite a bit. Wilson fouls this one back, and the count goes to two and two. Two and two to Ty Wilson, bottom of the fifth. Hannah Sasaki on at first. Carter looks in and delivers. And Wilson sends this one into left field. Rebolledo in foul territory is going to be able to make the catch. Didn't think at first she was going to get to it, but it stayed inside the fence. And Rebolledo the wheels, as you said, to get over and put that one away. Yeah, she just covers a lot of ground, right? She's been going back on balls, getting that ball in, in foul territory. Um, she just plays such a good left field. This will be Madison Kawadi now with two outs. And the Red Hawks trying to do something with that leadoff base hit. So far have not been able to do anything. With uh, Vigiano and Wilson both making outs. Kawadi takes ball one. And both of those outs recorded by Lino Rebolledo. One and oh to Kawadi. There's a called strike. And the count evens up at one and one. Kawadi in the box and Carly Nance on deck. The Red Hawks trying to get Carly Nance up there.
Carter misses with ball two to Madison Kawadi. Two and one. Pitch on the way. And Kawadi sends this one into center field. Madison Carr tracking it all the way. Didn't have to move more than maybe a couple of steps back. And that'll do it in the fifth inning. 3-3 three, three as we go to the sixth here on ESPN+. Plus. Good ball game. We'll be right back. Tastes like a Coke. We nailed it! Coke Zero Sugar. Have they nailed it? Sounds like they really nailed it, huh? Nailed it. And that's when you said... So it really tastes like a Coke. Yeah, that's the point. Being a great father takes some heavy lifting and a whole lot of reps. Kids trust their dads. Their dads trust Goldberg Jones. My dad always told me, keep it simple. Work hard, save a little. Don't pay for anything you don't need. Enjoy what you got and hang on to it. Now that's true freedom, he'd say. He'd also say, finding people you trust, now that's worth more than all the bells and whistles. And like always, he was right. Welcome back to Logan Field in Seattle. Greg Sexton and Katie Favilla with you on ESPN Plus, and we have a 3-3 ball game. Stephanie Madrigal back in the circle, and she will work to Megan Gibbs to lead off the top of the sixth. And then she'll be followed by Carly Olson and Donye Alberton. As Madrigal misses with ball one to Gibbs, starting off the top of the sixth. Seattle with three runs in the first on a Kalen Hill three-run home run, and then Michaela Thompson responds in the top of the fifth with a three-run home run. And this one fouled off by Gibbs. Wolverines three hits or three runs on five hits in the ball game, and the Red Hawks three runs on just two hits. So both pitchers have given up a three-run home run, but this really does feel more like a pitcher's duel than your, your typical uh, each pitcher has given up a three-run home run game. One and one the count, or two and one as that one misses for ball two to Gibbs. Madrigal looks in. And Gibbs sends this one down the first base line. Garcia makes the play in foul territory, reaching out, and she snares it before it hits the turf. Great play there by Lily Garcia to get to that ball. Yeah, she's covering a lot of ground. Good for her. She had the dive where she just missed one an inning or two before, and that one just uses her wheels and gets right on over there. So that one was dropping fast. Looked like it uh, was going to land in foul territory, and Garcia chases it down for the first out here in the sixth. Here's Carly Olson. Olson is one for two in the ball game, batting 219. And Madrigal gets a called strike on the outside corner. One and one to Olsen. And uh, said Donye Alberton was going to be the next uh, hitter up, but looks like the Wolverines are going to pinch hit. I think. Looks like it's Peyton Priggy. That is a number eight. Yeah. And that is Peyton Priggy. 
This one is sent through the 5-6 hole. Kawadi making the play and gets it over to first in time to get Carly Olsen. What a play by Madison Kawadi. Give me some Derek Jeter in the hole. Yes, ma'am. That was a fantastic play in the 5-6 hole. All day, Madison Kawadi with the quick release she's had all year. That is some lockdown defense at shortstop. Just guns it over there. And Olsen does not get to the bag in time as uh, we'll get a look at the replay here. And, uh, Kawadi that was spicy. I love right. it. Goes down to a knee, gets back up, and throws it out Carly Olsen. Here is Peyton Priggy, the pinch hitter for the Wolverines. And uh, Peyton Priggy batting 222, has three RBIs. And uh, six for 27 overall on the season, has a double. And the count one and one here to Priggy. Priggy pinch hitting for Alberton. And Madrigal's pitch is fouled off down the third base side. Ooh, count goes to one and two. Coming in hot in the Utah Valley dugout. Those girls sitting on the buckets got to look alive there. Priggy out of Phoenix, Arizona, a junior. Yeah, you're uh, out from behind that uh, that little netting down there, blocking most of the dugout. Definitely got to have your head on a swivel. That one missed outside, and the count goes to two and two. Madrigal working to Priggy here with two outs on the top of the sixth. That one inside. It came in near uh, Priggy's leg there, but uh, missed inside for ball three. Pitch on the way. Check swing, takes ball four, and the appeal down to first, she did not go. So Peyton Perky draws a two-out walk here in the top of the sixth. That's going to bring up Laney Bettenker. Yeah, and we've seen a few more walks, I think, than we're normally used to seeing from Steph here. Um, it, you know, I think a little bit's kind of feeling out the strike zone a little bit, but she's really got a lock down here. You can't let that let that walk come around to score and change this ball game. Uh, as we get in another, yeah, another pinch hitter, it looks like, for Bettenker. Bettenker was out there at the plate, yeah. and then they called her back. And uh, this is going to be Jordan Freese uh, pinch hitting again. We saw her come in in the first game. And uh, – Madrigal having a conversation with her pitching coach, Caitlin Neese, in the circle. She will head back to the dugout now. And so a big spot in this game here in the top of the sixth. Fergie on at first. And Jordan Freeze pinch hitting. Yeah, you really got to focus in. If you're Madrigal and if you're the Seattle U defense, you've got two outs. Everybody make their play. Know where you're going with the ball. Keep things clean. Madrigal's first pitch on the way. And that one just missed for ball one. 1-0 one and oh to Jordan Fries. And she takes ball two. Freese now batting 385 on the season in limited at bats, five for 13 on the season. And Madrigal misses outside there, and the count goes to three and zero. So the conversation she had with Caitlin Neese 
not paying dividends to this point. There's a called strike. And the count goes to three and one. Yeah, and if you're the defense right now for Seattle U, you gotta pick your pitcher up. She gives you a ground ball, you gotta know what to do with it. Swing and a miss. And the count goes full at three and two. That one down in the dirt a little bit. Breeze chased it. That drop ball that Madrigal will throw frequently. This one fouled off. Full count, two outs, top of the six, tie ball game. And Priggy's going, and she's got pretty good speed, and Priggy's going to go on anything, 3-2 with two outs. Um, so you don't want anything to get in a gap. You don't want her to go uh, first to home for anything. Pitch on the way, and that one is fouled off on the third base side. Priggy gets down to second base and turns around and heads back. Good battle here with a tie ball game in the top of the sixth. The Red Hawks are able to pull this one out. They would go up three games on Utah Valley for second place. There's a called strike three and Madrigal with another strikeout to end an inning and that will do it for the Wolverines. They have a runner get on and that's it. 3-3 three, three as we go to the bottom of the sixth on ESPN+. Plus. So high tech, first class. The spirit of scientific collaboration. It's a real nice space to be in. Seattle University is a student-centered university. As a university, we should seek to bring a better world into being through our students. I mean, nobody wants to jump through extra hoops when it's already so daunting. You just want to be able to focus on the exciting part. The style, the layout, the materials, like making it home. Yeah, and not having to double up on a construction loan and permanent financing, it just saves a ton of headache. It, it's really just an all-in-one solution. And that's what's made all the difference. Welcome back to Logan Field in Seattle. Good ball game going here as we go to the bottom of the sixth. And the Red Hawks will send up Carly Nance, Kaylin Hill, and Lily Garcia to face off against Brooke Carter, who has really pitched well in this game for the Wolverines, despite giving up that three-run home run to Hill in the first. Carter with six strikeouts, just two hits allowed. was looking at a 3-0 deficit for a lot of this game. But uh, Michaela Thompson, her first baseman, was able to bail her out. Now Carly Nance up there with a 2-0 count. And we know about Carly Nance being a threat to leave the yard at any time. This one's popped up, and it is going to land somewhere behind us, I believe. Yeah, you would love a little Carly Nance magic here in the bottom of the six. Um, she's done it time and time again. This would be another great time for a little Carly Nance bomb. Two and one the count, pitch on the way. Up high for ball three. Nance is gonna make her throw her, throw her a strike. Carter may be a little selective here. Catches the strike zone there. 
And looked like a little bit of a drop ball there. Yeah, that was a good little off-speed something there. Um, kept everybody on their toes. It's a gutsy, gutsy pitch to throw, 3-1. Three, 3-2 and two now. And the pitch on the way to Nance, fouled back. And a good battle to start the bottom of the sixth in a 3-3 ball game. And this is just power versus power. You see, if you're Brooke Carter, if you can get something to Carly to chase, and if you're Carly, you've got to, you know, stay away, stay within yourself, don't try and do too much. Her best swings are the ones where she doesn't try too hard, and the ball just jumps off her bat. Here's the pitch up high for ball four, and Carly Nance walks to lead off the sixth inning for the Red Hawks. And this is what you need to do if you're Seattle U. You have to make these walks hurt against Utah Valley. You know, Brooke Carter and Steph Madrigal, both of them have kind of wiggled their way off the hook with um, walks here and there. But um, you really need to, if you're Kaylin Hill, really make that walk hurt. Signaled that uh, they're going to pinch run, and now here comes Naomi Chaidez out of the dugout to run for Carly Nance. And Kaylin Hill to the plate. Hill had a couple of hits in the first game and had a three-run home run in the first inning of this one. Five RBIs on the day for Kaylin Hill, giving her 29 for the season. And they could use another big hit from her here. That one's down the middle of the plate for strike one. Maybe just on the outer half. Oh, and one to Hill. Pitch on the way from Carter is up high for ball one. Chides has done some pitching for the Red Hawks and uh, scored a couple of runs as a uh, pinch runner. Does not have a, uh, an at-bat, but has two runs scored. That one misses, and Kalena Shepard going out to the circle to uh, have a little chat with Burke Carter and the rest of the infield. Yeah, you've just got to bear down here if you're Utah Valley, make clean plays, try and get a double play if you can. Um, with nobody out here, and Kaylin Hill's just got to clutch up. She's been doing hitting the ball really, really well these last few games. Uh, got to clutch up, see if you can move this runner into scoring position or score her. Uh, both would be very nice at the bottom of the six right now. Two and one to Hill. Outfield playing pretty straight up. And there's strike two. Count goes to two and two. And Kaylin Hill doesn't like it, but the way the strike zone been, has been going today, you can't leave anything up to the umpire right now. If you think a pitch is close, go and take it, foul it off, or go drive it somewhere. You can't leave anything up to him. This is your at-bat. That one misses high and away for ball three. And the count goes full to Kaylin Hill. Bottom of the sixth. And the Red Hawks with their leadoff runner on base. And Hill pops this one into foul territory on the first base side. Thompson giving it a look, but runs out of room. Not a lot of room in foul territory here at Logan Field. Three and two the count. Lily Garcia waiting on deck. Pitch on the way to Hill. And that one is ripped through the left side into left field for a base hit. And the Red Hawks, their first two runners on here in the bottom of the sixth. Big yeah. hit for Kaylin Hill. Good turn on that inside pitch. She just turns on it nice and quick. A big hole there in the 5-6 hole. Uh, good job. Good piece of hitting there by Kaylin Hill. Kaylin Hill has four hits today in the two ball games. And the... Uh, Wolverines will have another conference in the circle as Cody Thompson, the head coach, comes out now to, talk to uh, talk to Brooke Carter. And the Red Hawks will get their base runners and Lily Garcia together with Jeff Hirai. And you got to 
know what you're doing, right? With nobody out, Lily Garcia is super versatile, right? We've seen her hit uh, home runs. She can play small ball. Do you lay a bunt down here? Do you some, do a double hit and run? Like, what do you do? Um, you've got a lot of options with nobody out. And for the Utah Valley side, you got to know what to do with the ball. No errors. That's what hurt them a little bit in the first game. They kicked the ball around a little bit. Um, to keep this a tie ball game, everybody's got to do their job, keep it clean. Garcia just the one hit today, but it was a three-run home run in the first inning of the first game. And she's 0 for 2 in this one. Red Hawks would love at least a base hit if not a gap uh, uh, a gap shot or another home run. And Carter taking a little too much time there. I think it was Garcia called time. Now she's back up there. And that one up and away for ball one. And you see, so there's the plan, right? So at this moment, Lily Garcia is laying down a sack bunt, which I think is great, right? All you need is to scratch out one right now. You just need to move runners. Um, but now you've pulled them in. Do you take it off? Now try and hit a gap. Your infield is shaking hands with you at the moment. So see what they do here. 1-0. and oh. And the pitch on the way, showing bunt again, lays it down. And that is going to move the runners to second and third. Good bunt there by Garcia, does her job. And the Red Hawks now with two in scoring position. Beautiful sack bunt. It is not easy. I say that every game that a beautiful sack bunt is laid down. It's so hard to do, especially with somebody who throws a lot of spins like Brooke Carter. That's a great job by Lily Garcia to just get these runners in so that somebody else can either hit a fly ball, get a sack fly, or hit something to the grass, and maybe you score two. It'll be up to Brooke Milder here with one out. Naomi Chaidez on at third. And Kalen Hill on its second. And the pitch on the way from Brooke Carter to Brooke Milder is a strike. And the count 0 and 1. Milder walked in the second inning and is 0 for 1 with that walk. She flied out in the fourth. And she takes a ball. Count goes to one and one. And Utah Valley infield's playing really far in. They're going to try and cut down any contact play at home. Um, they are going to attack this ball. They have to know exactly where they're going with it. One one pitch. Milder fouls it back. Count goes to one and two. I don't know what they're doing with that soccer net. They're carrying it all over. That can't be can't be light. Just the don't uh, just don't hit a soccer ball in here. That's all we ask. Just don't kick one in here. Beyond the left field fence here at Logan Field, kind of an all-purpose field. And uh, we see a lot of people out there just on an, on an evening like this, it's, uh, you know, starting to warm up a little bit in Seattle. And uh, people are getting out and getting active here on campus at Seattle University. We should head inside for a little bit and catch this one on ESPN Plus or come over here. Milder swings and misses and a big strikeout for Brooke Carter. That is her seventh of the ball game. Yeah, that's a huge strike. That ball just tailing away from Milder just in the other batter's box. Great, great pitch by Brooke Carter there. That'll bring up Cameron Coleman with two outs and those runners still at second and third. And Carter trying to get out of it here in the bottom of the sixth. Carter has given up three hits now as Kalen Hill had the third hit a moment ago. And Coleman sends that one foul down the right field line. Just a, kind of a check swing there and not able to keep it fair. Man, and what an exclamation point it would be being senior weekend for Cam Coleman here to get this big hit uh, in this situation right now. Just a little drive. That's all you need. You just need to scratch one across and see what happens in the seventh. Carter looks in and delivers up high for ball one. 
speaking of senior weekend and tight ball games, as Cody Thompson again taking a walk out to the circle. Red Hawks, their last three senior days, they have won in walk-off fashion. Ooh, I like that. I like the sound of that. As uh, it was uh, Cherise Sylvan last year with a home run in the bottom of the ninth against Dixie State on senior day. And uh, can't beat that for drama. <laughs> As uh, that was her last at bat, regular season at bat. Of course, you know, she hit another home run in the WAC tournament. A in huge the championship one. Game. That was fun. Yeah, it was. That put the Red Hawks, the, the, the home run in the WAC championship game, put them ahead by six runs, and they would hang on for the win against New Mexico State. But, uh, of course, no senior day. And that is Cherise Sylvan, I believe, down the uh, third base side. I think you're right. One and one the count here to Coleman, and she fouls it back. And Allie Choate. Allie Choate over there as well. Red Hawks get some, uh, some alumni turning out to their games. As uh, Coleman with a one-two count here. And that one misses high and away for ball two. No senior day in 2020, obviously, but uh, it bo both 2018 and 2019, Emma Mitchell had walk-off RBI singles on senior day. And of course, 2019, she was a senior, but she did that two years in a row. And uh, not, not uh, used very often by, by Jeff Hirai, but uh, he put her up in a couple of clutch spots. She delivered on senior day, both 2018 and 2019. Three and two here to Cameron Coleman. Second and third. And Coleman takes a called strike three over the inside corner. And it's the eighth strikeout for Brooke Carter. Big one here to end the sixth inning. We are going to the seventh, tied at three. We'll be right back on ESPN+. Plus. Goldberg Jones, 1-800-DIVORCE. You have questions? We have answers. Protecting Northwest husbands and fathers since 1995. Call 1-800-DIVORCE. I mean, nobody wants to jump through extra hoops when it's already so daunting. You just want to be able to focus on the exciting part. The style, the layout, the materials. Like, making it home. Yeah, and not having to double up on a construction loan and permanent financing. It just saves a ton of headache. It's really just an all-in-one solution. And that's what's made all the difference. As a university, we should seek to bring a better world into being through our students. Welcome back to Logan Field. Greg Sexton, Katie Favilla with you on ESPN+. Plus. We have a 3-3 ball game going to the top of the seventh, and the Red Hawks are making a pitching change as Stephanie Madrigal will give way to Grace Luterer, who has had a very solid freshman season for Seattle U and comes in at a big spot here with the top of the Wolverines order coming to the plate. One, two, and three. Carr, Rebolledo, and Shepard here for the Wolverines in the seventh. Yeah, Luterer, she only um, came out for two innings against UW on Tuesday, but she only allowed one hit, and that's exactly what you need to do here. She needs to shut the top of the lineup down and give her offense another chance to go win this ball game in walk-off fashion. She gets a strike. 
to Madison Carr. Luter, six and six record, 90 and a third innings pitched and has allowed 62 walks, but has struck out 92. And there's another strike. She has been effectively wild at times, but uh, they, we, they call it effectively wild for a reason. She's able to uh, strike some people out. 0-2 here to Madison Carr leading off the seventh. This one is hit to Kawadi, and she has to quickly release it and does get it over to first in plenty of time for the first out. Yeah, Madison Carr, or Madison Carr is just trying to pound that ball into the ground, but it's bouncing right to Kawadi, um, and with the quick release, she's gotten her by a step or a hair every time. That'll bring up Lena Rebolledo with one out and the base is empty here in the seventh. And Grace Luterer ready to go to work. And Rebolleta fouls that one back. And this is what you want. You want Grace to come in. You want her to throw strikes, attack these hitters, get through this seventh. Um, she's doing exactly what she she's called on to do. Owen won the count. Luterer looks in and delivers. And Rebolledo did not go around, and that was not called a strike either. Count goes to one and one. Luderer looks in and delivers a one-one pitch, and this one is hit right to Kawadi, and she will put it away for the second out. Rebolledo hit that one pretty well, but right back to Madison Kawadi at shortstop. Yeah, Kawadi's been busy all game. Hard hits left and right. That'll bring up Kalena Shepard with two outs and the base is empty. Top of the seventh, 3-3 three, three ball game. Each team with a three-run home run. And nothing besides those, those uh, three-run home runs. Shepard takes ball one from Grace Luterer. One and oh. And that one is in there for strike one. Change up there by Luterer. Yeah, and I'm really surprised that's actually the first one we've seen. She has been living on that pitch for the last couple starts. Um, it's a really good pitch to take these aggressive Utah Valley hitters off their, off their game. One and one, that one misses for ball two. Two and one to Kalina Shepard. She's one for three in the ball game. Uh, make it two for three, she has scored one run. That was the one I was looking at. She's two for three in this one. As she fouls this one off on the third base side. Brooke Milder playing the carom. Mm -hmm. And the count two and two to Shepard. Luterer looks in, delivers. And this one is popped into center field. And right there is Olivia Vigiano. And she puts it away for the third out. Grace Luterer comes in and gets the top three in the Utah Valley order. We'll head to the bottom of the seventh in just a moment. Red Hawks with a chance to walk it off. Tastes like a Coke. We nailed it! Coke Zero Sugar. Have they nailed it? Sounds like they really nailed it, huh? Nailed it. And that's when you said... So it really tastes like a Coke. Yeah, that's the point. Being a great father takes some heavy lifting and a whole lot of reps. Kids trust their dads. Their dads trust Goldberg Jones.
My dad always told me, keep it simple. Work hard, save a little. Don't pay for anything you don't need. Enjoy what you got and hang on to it. Now that's true freedom, he'd say. He'd also say, finding people you trust, now that's worth more than all the bells and whistles. And like always, he was right. Welcome back to Logan Field in Seattle. Greg Sexton and Katie Favilla with you on ESPN Plus. Good ball game here. Brooke Carter will head out there for her seventh inning of work. And the Red Hawks are going to send up 9 1 and 2 here in the bottom of the seventh. Hannah Sasaki will start it off. Sasaki, a couple of hits, one in each game today. And looking to get on board again here and a little uh, check swing there for strike one. Yeah, just pulled the string on her on that off speed pitch there. Sasaki now batting 184 on the season. And the pitch on the way, misses outside for ball one. It'll be Sasaki, Vigiano, and Wilson. And then if they're able to get beyond those three, Madison Kawadi would be fourth up in the inning, and then Carly Nance would be fifth up. Here is Sasaki hitting it on the ground. Albertson with the throw over to first for the out. And so one up and one down for the Red Hawks here in the bottom of the seventh. Olivia Vigiano will step to the plate. She's had a quiet day. 0 for 3 in this game. And uh, went hitless in the first game as well. 0 for 3. This would be a good time for her to get on base with a hit. Absolutely. Brooke Carter really has pitched very well in this game. And Vigiano sends one into shallow center field, and Carr's going to have to play it on a hop. And there is that hit for Vigiano with one out here in the bottom of the seventh. And that'll send, that will send Ty Wilson to the plate. Yeah, that's a great time for it there. That's exactly what you needed. You need to get the top of your lineup up right now. Cody Thompson heading out to the circle, and he's been out there a few times here these last couple innings. And uh, Jeff Hirai is going to meet with his uh, base runner, his batter, and his on-deck hitter over there by third base. And I think with that hit, so Vigiano only needs two more hits to move up to eighth all-time uh, for SU history for, for career hits. Um, so she gets two more. She'll come into a tie with one of my teammates, Megan McDad McIsaac and uh, Bubba Morrow. So then would be up to 182. So right now she's at 180. Um, so she could easily get those two hits um, to move herself up in the ranks in the record books here. Vigiano among the career leaders in runs scored as well. Passed you on that list, I believe, yeah, I know, earlier I this know. year. And uh, not sure where she's at on the stolen base. I don't talk about that one either, Greg. Uh, you're the <laughs> stolen base leader. So, no, she's not, she's not close to you. This is Wilson dropping down a bunt, and she's going to get to first base in time. The throw to second, and Vigiano gets back. And Wilson, another bunt drop down expertly. Every time. It's so good. I love it. I love it. I love it. It is so pretty to see. Those, they know it's coming, and they still can't get her out. That's exactly what you want. You go for a sacrifice. Great. You move a runner in. You get the extra bonus if she gets on. And here you go. Madison Kawadi, do your job right now. Kawadi with an opportunity here. Runners at first and second. One out, bottom of the seventh, 3-3 three, three ball game. Red Hawks won the first game of the doubleheader by an 8-0 count, but this one has been tight. Really, I guess since the Wolverines tied it up in the fifth, but even uh, leading up to that, it was just a 3-0 ball game. And uh, you knew that Utah Valley was not going, it was, was not going down easily. 
but the Red Hawks trying to come through here in the bottom of the seventh. Kawadi with a 1-0 count. Sends this one into center field right at Madison Carr, and she's able to put it away for the second out. Kawadi hit it hard, but it hit it right to Madison Carr. Yeah, right on the nose. Puts a good swing on the ball, but here you go. You want some senior day magic? Let's have some senior day magic. Right now, Carly Nance doing Carly Nance things. This is what you want. Here you go. Carly Nance to the plate with two outs here in the bottom of the seventh. Olivia Vigiano on at second. Ty Wilson on at first. And Nance with a big opportunity here. Oh, they are going to walk her. They are going to put her on and pitch to Kaylin Hill, who has four hits today. And if you are Kaylin Hill, you take this personally. You say, you're going to walk Carly Nance. You're going to take this to, to get the bases loaded to come to me, who has hit a home run, who has had base hit after base hit. You take this personally. You go show them that, that you, can, you can end this ball game with one swing of the bat. You really can't blame them for walking Carly I Nance. I mean, in this you situation. can't really. I mean, it's really, yeah. It, neither of those choices are fun, right? Carly but Nance and, and Kaylin Hill right now, neither would be fun to face. You get, yeah, you got to pick your poison, and they'll they'll uh, pitch the freshman catcher, Kaylin Hill, who's going to use the same bat that Carly Nance just I dropped like in. I like that. I like that. Two outs, bases loaded, bottom of the seventh, and Kaylin Hill with a huge mammoth opportunity here brooke carter on the uh the rubber six and two-thirds innings pitched and hill swings and misses at strike one and she was trying to go for four runs on that one yeah and this moment isn't too big for brooke carter she's rearing back going right down the middle there blowing it by her carter with eight strikeouts in the ball game 0-1 to Kalen Hill, pitch on the way. And she tried to check her swing and she went around. They go down to the third base umpire. Normally they would go to first, but they said that she went around and she is now down 0-2. Gotta dig deep here if you're Kalen Hill. 0-2 count, pitch on the way, up high for ball one. And that's the thing. Don't chase. Don't chase the up ball. Don't leave it up to the umpire. Take this at bat. It is yours. Take this at bat. One and two to the Red Hawks freshman catcher who has homered and doubled. Four hits on the day in the two ball games. Takes ball two. Big three run home run in the first inning of this game for Kalen Hill. Two and two the count. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. And we're going to the eighth inning here at Logan Field. Brooke Carter strikes out Kalen Hill with the bases loaded. And we will be back on ESPN Plus 3-3. We're going to extras.
Avila with you as we move to the eighth on ESPN Plus. And Michaela Thompson, who hit the three-run home run in the top of the fifth, is back up there facing Grace Luderer. Luderer came in and retired all three of the hitters that she faced in the seventh. And now works to Michaela Thompson and delivers strike one. Red Hawks had the bases loaded in the bottom of the seventh. Galen Hill, they walked Carly Nance uh, intentionally to get to Kalen Hill, and Kalen Hill unable to deliver in that spot. She did have a three-run home run earlier in this one. She has four hits on the day. Thompson behind 0-2. And, and a swing and a miss, and Grace Luter are dealing. One down here in the top of the eighth. Yeah, Grace coming in and just throwing hard, throwing strikes. Um, she always throws hard, but this feels like another level. She's had some rest today as uh, she just came in last inning. Red Hawks with three good starters now that they can choose from with Stephanie Madrigal back and, of course, Carly Nance now at full strength as well. And Riley Thorpe fouls the first pitch back. 0-1 oh the count. Thorpe is 0 for 2 with a walk. Walked in the fourth inning. That one up and away. And the count goes to 1-1. One and one. Yeah, and Thorpe played the hero um, in one of the games against Dixie State. She had a walk-off hit. Uh, she also had a home run against Utah. Um, so she can also change the momentum of this game really quick for Utah Valley. One and one the count, pitch on the way. Misses for ball two. That one just below the strike zone. And the count two and one to Riley Thorpe. Megan Gibbs waiting on deck. Pitch on the way. And that one missed for ball three. Kalen Hill with the mask off, saying something to Grace Luterer. Three and one the count. Top of the eighth inning. 3-3 three, three ball game. And there's ball four to Riley Thorpe. So Luter strikes out Thompson, but then walks Thorpe with one out here in the top of the eighth. And she'll work to Megan Gibbs here. Yeah, and if there's been kind of one thing uh, that Grace Luter, kind of the, the bugaboo for Grace Luter, it has been the walks. She can be effectively wild, but she's usually been able to wiggle herself out of any jams she gets herself in. This one is a big one. You need to limit the base runners, just get outs. Defense needs to play clean behind her. Gibbs is 0 for 3 now, batting an even 300 on the season. Slugging 600. And she will come to the plate here. She's got nine home runs for the Wolverines. Yeah, when she swings, she swings for extra bases, no, no doubt about it. Luter looks in and delivers. And there's a called strike. Luter gets ahead in the count, 0-1 to Gibbs with Riley Thorpe on it first. Carly Olson in the on-deck circle for Utah Valley. Pitch on the way. Swing and a miss. And Luter jumps in front, 0-2. Yeah, good to jump back, 0-2 here uh, after issuing the walk, just coming right back at him. Outfield playing straight up for the Red Hawks. Luterer delivers, and it's fouled off down the first base side. Bounce back onto the field, and Cameron Coleman will go get it. Owen 2 
to Gibbs with one out. Here in the eighth. O2 pitch. Fouled away again. Yeah, Luter really staying away from her, trying to get her to hit something off the end of the bat there. Everything's been kind of low and away. Get a couple more balls in to the home plate, the home plate umpire, Joe Mihelich. 0-2 to Megan Gibbs. Luterer's pitch. And it's fouled on the third base side. Count remains 0-2. This has been a really good ball game, and it's a pivotal ball game, too, because the uh, Wolverines, if they are able to pull this one out, they would get back to a game behind the Red Hawks for second place in the West Division in the WAC. Red Hawks are able to pull it out. They would go up by three games. As this one is hit into right field, Ty Wilson moving over to her left just a bit and in and puts it away for the second out. Yeah, and again, another good off speed there by Luterer, really keeping them off balance. Could, didn't get a lot on the swing, just didn't have enough behind it to send it anywhere. Carly Olson will hit now. Olson one for three in the ball game. Batting 2-12 for the Wolverines. And this one is hit into right field. Wilson will throw to first, and it's dropped by Coleman at first. They had her. Wilson charged that one and threw a strike to first base, and it was dropped. Oh, that's an outfielder's dream. It's a right fielder's dream to throw somebody out at first, and she had her. Oh, just couldn't hold on to it. So the Wolverines catch a break there. And Donye Albertson will get to hit here with runners at first and second and two out here in the top of the eighth. Luterer's pitch is a called strike. Albertson is uh, 0 for 1 on the day with a, a walk. And that one gets away from Kalen Hill and the runners are gonna move up to second and third. And Albertson now a chance to knock in two with a base hit. Now the same infield defense applies. You gotta get the runner at first. There's two outs, get, get the runner at first. Outfield though, ground ball, you have to be on your horse. You have to cut the run from second from scoring. Luterer delivers, and this one is back up the middle, and Vigiano dies and makes the catch. Oh, what a play by Olivia Vigiano in center field to save two runs. We will go to the bottom of the eighth, tied at three. We'll be right back on ESPN+. Plus. McCarthy Realty has been helping people with their real estate needs in and around Seattle since 1964. Today, we are partnered with Coldwell Banker to provide the personal service of a local company and the expansive breadth of CB's international marketing power. From your Seattle area backyard to every place on the planet, we have you covered. With every sale, we contribute a portion of our revenue to Seattle University. Benton McCarthy Realty, we're the team to reach your goals with integrity, commitment, and successful conclusions. Great, man. We just won the championship. We're going to win another one again and again and again. And it's just going to be great. I'm telling you. I'm telling everybody. We don't have to go. We're champs now. We need a cooler mascot. Like what? I don't know. Something handsome. More than a quarter million fans agree. And that is how Seattle welcomed the world champions home. I mean, nobody wants to jump through extra hoops when it's already so daunting. 
You just want to be able to focus on the exciting part. The style, the layout, the materials. Like, making it home. Yeah, and not having to double up on a construction loan and permanent financing. It just saves a ton of headache. It, it's really just an all-in-one solution. And that's what's made all the difference. Back to Logan Field, bottom of the eighth inning, and Lily Garcia sends the first pitch into center field. Madison Carr moves over to a left and puts it away for the first out here in the bottom of the eighth. Top of the eighth ended on a diving play by Olivia Vigiano and saved a couple of runs. They, uh, the Wolverines had runners at second and third. Yeah, that's just a massive dive play. I, that is so hard to dive in center field in front of you. And I didn't know if she had enough to get there, but it was a thing of beauty to save those two runs. Brooke Milder to the plate now, taking ball one from Brooke Carter. Now each team with three runs on five hits in the ball game. Red Ox have committed an error. Both teams have left eight runners stranded. And Carter delivers to Milder and she fouls it away. One and one the count. Milder batting now and then Cameron Coleman on deck. And fortunately for Cameron Coleman, after she dropped that uh, throw from Ty Wilson, the uh, she was bailed out by Olivia Vigiano. As the count goes to one and two. And this has just been a an excellent softball game. Absolutely. Three, three, bottom of the eighth. Pitch on the way. Milder sends it to short. Alberton, a couple of hops, gets it over to first in plenty of time. Two down here in the bottom of the eighth. And Cameron Coleman will step to the plate with the bases empty. Yeah, two hard hits there, just right at people. Um, and again, it's just a tie ball game, but man, you'd love to scratch something across here, get this game done. Coleman batting 188, has struck out three times in this game. But with uh, Brooke Carter throwing hard, all you gotta do is make solid contact. There's strike one. Coleman with one home run on the season. Seven runs batted in. Carter misses off the plate, and the count goes to one and one. Hannah Sasaki waiting on deck. And then the Red Hawks would get back to the top of the lineup if they can keep it going here in the eighth. Pitch on the way, and Coleman sends it fouled on the left field line. One in on her hands. One and two the count. Brooke Carter a strike away from sending this to the ninth. Yeah, and if you're Cam here, you just got to battle. Again, don't leave it up to the umpire. Anything close, foul it off. Get something out into the green. Um, just got to battle, make this game end here. Don't get it to the ninth. See what you can do. Here's the pitch from Carter, and that one misses up and away for ball two. Two and two. Red Hawks with three in the first on a Kaylin Hill three-run home run. Wolverines three in the fifth on a Michaela Thompson three-run home run. And that has been the scoring. Coleman swings and misses for strike three. And Brooke Carter with 10 strikeouts in the ballgame now through eight innings. And we are going to the ninth here on ESPN+. Plus. Good ball game. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Goldberg Jones, 1-800-DIVORCE. You have questions? We have answers. Protecting Northwest husbands and fathers since 1995. Call 1-800-DIVORCE. 
I mean, nobody wants to jump through extra hoops when it's already so daunting. You just want to be able to focus on the exciting part. The style, the layout, the materials. Like, making it home. Yeah, and not having to double up on a construction loan and permanent financing. It just saves a ton of headache. It's really just an all-in-one solution. And that's what's made all the difference. We should seek to bring a better world into being through our students. Back to Logan Field. Greg Sexton and Katie Favilla with you. Top of the ninth inning on ESPN Plus. And it's a 3-3 ball game. Utah Valley with their 9-1-2 and two hitters coming up here against Grace Luterer. Luterer took over in the seventh. And... She worked out of uh, some trouble in the top of the eighth. Olivia Vigiano bailed her out. That one up and in on Bettenker. And she did not go around. Ball one. Luter, when she came in in the seventh, went one, two, three through the uh, top of the Utah Valley order. Laney Bettenker takes ball two. She's 0 for two, has struck out, twi uh, struck out twice. Just her third at bat of the game. They pinch hit for her with Jordan Priest earlier. And Eluder misses with ball three. Yeah, this game has just felt so back and forth, like who's going to break first, right? Who's going to capitalize? Who's going to get the big hit? Um, they've just been so evenly matched all game long. There's a strike to Betten Kerr, and the count goes to three and one. Betten Kerr is a slap hitter, and they are playing her that way for sure. There's strike two. Sasaki almost all the way over to the left field line. And Vigiano well over into left center. Three and two. Pitch on the way. Up the middle and Garcia dives for it. Can't get to it. Vigiano was over in left center. Gets over there to cut it off though. In the right center field gap. And Bettenker with a leadoff hit here in the top of the ninth. Yeah, and that's exactly what you want to do when a defense looks like that. That is a huge gap down the middle. I mean, if you hit that ball any harder, you could probably get a double for how, for how far Vigiano is playing into left. But that's exactly what you want to do as a slapper. Here is Madison Carr, who came in to the weekend leading the whack in batting average and still batting 427 but 0 for 4 in this game. Had a hit in the first one and drops down a bunt that goes foul. Got to watch for the bunt, obviously, here with a runner at first and nobody out here in the top of the ninth. Luder looks in. And misses with ball one. Yeah, and again, Utah Valley, just like Seattle U at the top of their lineup, you know, the 9-1-2, same with Seattle U. They just have so many weapons. You can do a whole lot. You can, you know, use this as a sacrifice. And if Madison Carr beats it out, great. Now you've got two runners on. So you, you have a lot um, of wiggle room to see what you want to do. 1-1 one, one pitch to Carr, and it gets to the backstop. And... That one up high, it'll move the runner, Blaney Bettenker, into second base. As that got over the head of Kalen Hill. So now two and one. And uh, Cody Thompson will talk things over with Madison Carr. And Caitlin Neese will head out to the pitching circle to talk with Grace Luter. 
Yeah, and it's it's these types of situations that are hard to stomach the effectively wild that has been Grace Luterer this freshman season. Um, it's, it's pitches like that that usually don't come back to bite you, but in a 3-3 ball game in the ninth, you've got to be clutch. You have to hit your zone. Um, you've really got to throw strikes because any little mistake is – you know something that they might be able to capitalize on and scratch a run across here so you've really got to buckle down here and really start throwing hard so the sack bunt no longer needed to get the runner to second but let's we'll see if they still keep it on and try to advance her to third this one is slapped to the left side and uh goes foul two and two the count nobody out top of the ninth laney buttonker at second base singled and advanced to second on the wild pitch a moment ago. Yeah, and if that ball's hit anywhere on the left side with Ma a Madison Carr slap, you have to make sure that Betancourt stays at second. She can't take three on the throw. That one missed up high. And the count goes full here on Madison Carr. Lino Rebolledo waiting on deck. Never want to see her come to the plate if mm -hmm. you're Seattle U. But she will be next. This one through the left side, off the glove of Kawadi into left field. And they're going to hold Bettencourt at third base. And a single through the left side by Madison Carr puts runners at first and third with nobody out here in the top of the ninth. And finally, Madison Carr finds a hole. It felt like all game she was going just to the left, just to the right of Kawadi, and finally sneaks one through that 5-6 hole at the perfect time here for her team. Lena Rebolledo will step to the plate. She is 0 for 3 in this game. Has a walk and scored a run. And she's batting 376 for the Wolverines. Pitch on the way. Misses for ball one. Now with nobody out, you don't really need to do a delayed steal or you know have Madison Carr grab that bag. Um, all you need is a sack fly to get one in, but they have so much speed on the base pass right now. They could pull a lot of things. The defense needs to know where to go. This one up the middle. Kawadi has it go off her glove. It's going to score a run. The throw to third, and Carr is safe at third, and Rebolledo takes second on the throw. And the Wolverines running the bases here in the top of the ninth. This team just knows how to come up clutch all day long, all season long. They've just known when to get those hits. Uh, top of the nine, here you go. So Rebolledo gets it through, scores the run. They draw the uh, throw to third. Carr gets in there, and Rebolledo into second base with the RBI single to put the Wolverines in front. Here in the top of the ninth, four to three. Still nobody out, runners at second and third, and Kalena Shepard, the hitter. One and oh the count. Looter needing to buckle down here and limit the damage. This one is hit high in the air, deep to right field. That one is gonna get out of here. And well beyond that right field fence. I thought she got under it at, at first, but she got all of it and hit it out and the Wolverines have a four run lead here in the ninth seven to three yeah I mean you knew it was time somebody was going to do something one of the, we were so evenly matched for nine innings here and finally Utah Valley comes through their offense finally comes through today and you show how much power how much speed they have up and down this lineup Two three-run home runs in the game for the Wolverines. One in the fifth by Michaela Thompson, who is coming to the plate now, and another by Kalina Shepard here in the ninth. And the Wolverines with a 7-3 to three lead, a huge home run for Kalina Shepard. That is her seventh of the year, and she now has 40 runs batted in on the season. And you are nowhere you know out of the woods here in the ninth you you still have nobody out you have to buckle down defense has to make plays and Grace Luter has got to throw strikes you got to get through the meat of this lineup right here to give your team a chance that one gets the backstop fortunately nobody on base and the count two and oh now to Michaela Thompson Cameron Coleman gonna go say something to Luterer Luter. 
And as a freshman in a big spot, she's just got to keep her focus here. And gets a strike here with a uh, foul back to the backstop off the bat of, of Thompson. And the count goes to two and one. Yeah, this is where um, you really have to make your memory short. Uh, you got to use the old Ted Lasso, right? Be a goldfish, very short memory. You got to get through the rest of this inning. Three and one now to Thompson as Luter misses down low. Base is empty, but four in for Utah Valley here in the ninth. And a swing and a miss by Thompson. And the count goes full. Wolverines a big four spot here in the ninth. And looking for more. 3-2 pitch to Thompson. Fouled back. And we'll do another full count pitch here. Wolverines now seven runs on nine hits. No errors. Red Hawks three runs on five hits and one error. Thompson fights that one off down the first baseline. It goes foul. And the count's still three and two. Yeah, you just got to battle here. If you're Seattle U, if you're Grace Luter, you just got to battle. Grind this out. Get these outs. Just how you were doing. Come out firing like you were in the seventh and the eighth. Go and attack them. Pitch on the way. Swing and a miss. And Grace Luter comes up with the strikeout. And that is her second of the ball game. She came in in the seventh, so has not pitched the full game. But uh, retires the first. It gets the first out here after the first four Wolverines all had base hits. Of course, Helena Shepherds went a little further than everybody else's did. <laughs> and that one was well out to right field. Here's Riley Thorpe with one out in the top of the ninth. Swing and a miss by Luterer, or by, uh, by Thorpe, rather. Luterer delivered the pitch. And it's 0-1. And, and a swing and a miss again. Red Hawks, when they come to bat, they will have 9-1 and 2 coming up again. But Luter has got to get out of the inning here first. Delivers ball one here to Thorpe, and the count goes to one and two. One and two to Riley Thorpe. Pitch on the way. This one is hit into shallow center field, and it'll be Lily Garcia to go back and make the play on that one. Two down here in the ninth. Yeah, and a good job there, again, kind of in that little Bermuda Triangle behind second base there. Lily Garcia takes control, gets that second out. Defense has got to pick their pitcher up right here to get through, grind through this ninth inning. Megan Gibbs will hit now for Utah Valley. She's 0 for 4 in the ball game. Came in over 300 with her batting average, and it has now dipped down to 297. And she gets into one to left field. That one back. And Sasaki runs it down and makes the catch out there in deep left field toward the line. The Wolverines get four in the top of the ninth, though. A good play to end the inning, but it is 7-3 Utah Valley. Tastes like a Coke. We nailed it. Coke Zero Sugar. Have they nailed it? Sounds like they really nailed it, huh? Nailed it. And that's when you said. <sighs> so it really tastes like a Coke. 
Yeah, that's the point. Being a great father takes some heavy lifting and a whole lot of reps. Kids trust their dads. Their dads trust both their parents. My dad always told me, keep it simple. Work hard, save a little. Don't pay for anything you don't need. Enjoy what you got and hang on to it. Now that's true freedom, he'd say. He'd also say, finding people you trust, now that's worth more than all the bells and whistles. And like always, he was right. Welcome back to Logan Field in Seattle. Greg Sexton and Katie Favilla with you on ESPN Plus. And the Red Hawks with their 9-1 and 2 hitters coming up against Brooke Carter, who has been out there the entire game. Hannah Sasaki will lead things off for the Red Hawks during the bottom of the ninth. Red Hawks gave up four in the top of the ninth, highlighted by a three-run home run by Kalina Shepard. And Sasaki takes, or swings at strike one, rather. This one is hit foul on the left field side above the Wolverines dugout. And if Utah Valley can hang on to this, I mean, what a complete game by Brooke Carter. I mean, she has the one blemish in the first inning and every other jam she's been able to wiggle out of. Just thrown really hard, thrown strikes, her, you know, usual strikeout pitches. Uh, she's just been nails. Ball one to Sasaki. <laughs> Carter has given up just the three runs on five hits. I was pitching a one hitter for a little while with the, that one hit being the three run home run by Kalen Hill in the first. That one misses outside. The Wolverines wanted the call there. Two and two the count to Hannah Sasaki. She's one for three in this game, had a hit in the first game as well. Two and two, here's Carter's pitch. And it is sent into left field and Rebolletto can't make the play, it's a fair ball. And Sasaki's gonna get into second base. And a good attempt there by Lino Rebolletto, just couldn't quite come up with it. Red Hawks catch a break. But they're gonna need a few more down four runs here. Yeah, man, we have just seen such effort out of outfielders on both sides here. You had the Sasaki catch to end the the top of the inning there, and then Revelato just couldn't hang on. But man, we've seen some good plays by some outies today. That goes down as a double for Hannah Sasaki. And here is Olivia Vigiano who made a an all out catch. I believe it was to end the top of the eighth. It was. That one is hit down the left field line. And it, it will land in play in foul territory. Vigiano came up with her first hit of the day in a big spot in the seventh. And she fouls this one back. Count goes to 0 and 2. Brooke Carter, five walks, 10 strikeouts in the game. Working here in the ninth. That one up high to Vigiano. Carly Nance last weekend pitched a 10 inning complete game at CBU. In the one game that the Red Hawks won in that series. And Vigiano sends this one into right field on a line right to Kaylee, uh, Laney Bettencur, rather. And that is the first out of the inning. Vigiano hit it hard, but 
not in the right spot. Yeah, she roped that ball. That was a good hard swing. Uh, just didn't didn't find the gap enough. Here's Ty Wilson coming to the plate. Jeff Hirai coming over to have a conversation with the home plate umpire. And she's pointing at something out there in right field, not sure what. Oh, I did think I saw that. There was some green like lasers on the uh, on the scoreboard. I'm not sure where it came from. The dorms are behind us facing right field. So who knows? But I did see what here I saw. Here in college, you uh, can uh, get into some, some, <laughs> some mischief. Mischief, exactly. Yeah, there are dorms facing the uh, the scoreboard there. So who knows? It's Friday night. Crazy things happen. Ty Wilson to the plate now, Ooh. and that one hits her in the batting helmet. Thought uh, it did. It did get her in the helmet. Yeah. Her her bat was up there too. So lucky it. Uh, well, not lucky. <laughs> you will it, take it. You know what? It She's good. Yep. <laughs> She is good. We will take a base runner at this point. Absolutely. So the Red Hawks getting into the heart of their order now with two runners on, one out, and Madison Kawadi to the plate. And things begin to get a little interesting here. If you can get Kawadi on base. Carly Nance is looming on deck. And Brooke Carter misses with ball one. And you've got speed out there. Again, hit a gap, let them fly. Make this a close ball game here. 1 and 0 oh to Madison Kawadi. Sasaki on at second and Wilson on at first. Pitch on the way. And Kawadi sends this one into left field for a base hit. They'll hold Sasaki at third, but the Red Hawks have the bases loaded and the tying run coming to the plate here in the bottom of the ninth. Can you deliver the counterpunch? You have it right here. Can you go toe to toe with Utah Valley? This has been just a battle back and forth. And let's see what Carly, Carly Nance can do here. Cody Thompson making another trip out to the circle to talk things over with Brooke Carter. Bases loaded, one out, bottom of the ninth. Carly Nance coming up in a huge spot here. Has 13 home runs and 54 runs batted in. This is exactly who you want in this spot if you are Seattle U. Man, this is fun. This is fun. <laughs> Looked like uh, the wind had kind of come out of the Red, the Red Hawk sails in the top of the ninth. And, uh, We've got some life. Definitely. We've got some life. Jeff Hurai clapping his hands, trying to pump up his team. Everybody got to be into it right now. You got to get the whole bench up, everybody on the rails right now. This, is, uh, this isn't do or die, but it sure feels fun. One out, bases loaded, bottom of the ninth. Red Hawks down four. And looking for a big hit here from Carly Nance. Pitch on the way, called strike from Brooke Carter. Carter with double digit strikeouts, 10 of them in the game. Trying to get out of this bottom of the ninth. That one misses outside for ball one. Stay within yourself if you're Carly Nance. Don't go chase, stay within your zone, put a good swing on the ball. One and one to Nance. And the pitch on the way. Oh, swing and a miss for strike two. Took something off it, Brooke Carter, that a girl. So Carter gets ahead of Nance, one and two. Nance back up in the box. 
Bases loaded, bottom of the ninth. Pitch on the way. Outside, ball two. Wolverines got four in the top of the ninth. Red Hawks looking to respond here. Two and two to Carly Nance. Pitch on the way. Outside, ball three. If you're Brooke Carter here, you gotta be careful. You got a four run cushion here. Yeah, can't give her too much. That one's up high for ball four. Carly Nance will take the walk down to first base. Anna Sasaki will come in and score. And the Red Hawks within three. And here's Kaylin Hill with a, an opportunity to redeem herself after striking out in her last at bat with the bases loaded. Exactly. You've got another time to clutch up here. It doesn't happen very often in this game, but here you go. You get a little deja vu. You get a little redo. Let's see what happens. Kaylin Hill, two for four in this one. Three runs batted in on the home run. We get McKenna Crone pinch running at first base for Carly Nance. Wilson at third, Kawadi at second. And Crum, now the pinch runner on at first for Nance. Kalen Hill, two for four, has struck out twice, but is up in a huge mammoth situation here in the bottom of the ninth inning with a chance to do some damage. Carter's first pitch, and Hill fouls it back. Hill was going after that pitch. Yeah, you've got to sit a little bit. You can't get too jumpy. You can't get too too big for the moment. Take a breath. Put a good swing on the ball. Owen won the count. Carter's pitch. Just missed up high for ball one. Yeah, and good way to not chase that up ball. It's not going to give you anything, right? you got to look for something down in the zone that you can line drive. One and one to Kalen Hill. Pitch on the way from Carter, up high for ball two. Two and one to the Red Hawks freshman catcher. Good hitters count here. If she throws something outside, just go with it. See if you can hit another right center gap here. Two and one. And the pitch on the way. And Hill pops it up on the infield, Alberton right behind second base, puts it away. And that is the second out of the inning. And that is gonna send up Lily Garcia. And Garcia, we saw her go deep early, earlier in the first game. She came up with her third home run of the season. She has had a lot of extra base hits for Seattle U this year. And they could use another one right here. Carter delivers the first pitch, and this one is popped up on the infield as well. And Michaela Thompson puts it away, and that'll do it. Red Hawks drop this one 7-4. to four. They made it very entertaining here in the bottom of the ninth, but they leave the bases loaded. They get one in. They do not get the rest in. And Utah Valley hangs on to win it in nine innings, 7-4. to four. What a ball game this was, though. Absolutely. Just a grinded out win for Utah Valley. I mean, that I mean seven to four, it was a heck of a lot closer than that. All ball game. And Utah Valley just show and fight. Brooke Carter pitched her butt off. My goodness, that was fun. And you know what? We got rubber match tomorrow. Let's go. And it's gonna be a big rubber match tomorrow as we are right back to where we started with one game separating these teams in the standings for second place in the WAC West Division. It's gonna be senior day tomorrow. Like, I, like you said, let's go. Oh, so fun, so emotional with senior day. The last time you're stepping foot on this field. Um, it's, oh goodness, it, it, this is a fun end of the season, I like it. 
Brooke Carter picks up the win, goes to 10 and nine, pitches nine innings, gives up four runs on seven hits, walks six, strikes out 10. And Stephanie Madrigal starts the game, goes six innings. Grace Luter takes the loss, giving up the runs in the ninth there and uh, gave up a three-run home run to Kalina Shepard after a, uh, an RBI single by Lena Rebolledo. And Utah Valley hangs on for the win, 7-4. to four. Shepard, three hits on the day with that home run. And Michaela Thompson had a three-run home run as well. She, she was two for five. Kaylin Hill had a couple of hits, including a three-run home run. And Hannah Sasaki, a couple of hits for the Red Hawks as well. But the Red Hawks fall short in nine innings. Utah Valley wins it 7-4 to four over Seattle U. We got another one coming up for you tomorrow, 1 p.m. start time, senior day. And we are looking forward to it. We'll be back tomorrow. Talk to you then. For Katie Favilla, I'm Greg Sexton. You have been watching a presentation of ESPN.